Good morning, everybody. Uh, after the insightful dialogue held yesterday by our esteemed speakers, we are looking forward to launch the second day of the third Sharjah Regional Clinic Cervical Cancer Forum. Today, we will we'll cover a new theme covering the topic of communication, advocacy, social mobilization. Okay, like, let me go through a little bit the agenda. The theme will be presented by Dr. Iman Tawheed from Kuwait, by, by Dr. Fatima Al Hamlan from Saudi Arabia, Ms. Radhika Shrivasta from India, and Ms. Fathiya Salama from Qatar. Just a reminder that the webinar, the forum is CME accredited by the Dubai Health Authority with nine CME hours. Uh, dear attendees, please fill up the evaluation form at the end of the forum to get your certificate of attendance by email. Without further ado, we would like to start our first session for today by introducing uh, Dr. Iman at tawheed Dr. Iman, she's a consultant gynecology at Kuwait Cancer Center. She's a general secretary at Kuwait Oncology Association and she has excessive uh, experience working in multiple hospitals, such as in Ireland, UK, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait. Dr. Iman is the Kuwait representative of the Society of Laparoscop Laparoscopic and Robotic Surgeons and the European Surgical Academy. Dr. Iman will talk about uh, advocacy and partnerships uh, mobili mobili mobilizing for effective cervical cancer prevention. Dr. Iman, welcome, and the floor is yours. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, you can hear you, doctor. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First, let me thank you uh, for the getting uh, involved in this program. And uh, I'm going to speak to you today about the advocacy and partnership uh, for effective uh, cancer prevention. Can you can you see my screen? Yes. Cannot move them. Sorry, Iman. Can you share my? Can I share my my slides, please? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, so here we are. So I'm going to speak to you today about what's the advocacy, how would you define it, and why do we advocate, and who we can, who can advocate, and how to advocate in terms of uh, cancer cervix. So uh, first, what's the advocacy? By definition, it's shedding light on a particular cause with the goal of influencing people or organizations. Now, why do we advocate for cervical cancer? Because the cervical cancer is the main cancer in female, uh, secondary to breast cancer, and it constitutes one of the main NCD uh, diseases, of course. And WHO in 2018 uh, issued special call for action to overcome this NCDs which is uh, the main group is at particular risk of these diseases. Now, uh, in uh, 17 of November 2020, the WHO has committed uh, to eliminate uh, the uh, strategy to eliminate the cancer cervix, and uh, they shared vision with countries to eliminate it by 2030. So you have to reach or maintain an incidence of cancer cervix in your area below four per 100,000 women. Obviously, in this strategy, they identified the three key pillars and their corresponding 1970-90 in terms of vaccinations, screening, and treatment target to accelerate the effort. Now, obviously, we know that we, the general public, they're not fully aware of this particular disease for many reasons. I'll come to it. Uh, shortly, and uh, despite uh, this cancer uh, cervix has uh, preventable and uh, treatment uh, very well recognized uh, all over the world. Now, first, who can advocate for this uh, cancer cervix um, prevention? 
basically anyone can advocate for this prevention and control and uh, you you can either make your advocacy your full-time career or you incorporate it into your existing career like what i do right now now the most successful advocacy uh, campaign involves diverse range of you have to involve individuals groups and organizations coming together but the best one for me uh, from my limited experience i guess the patient who are really impacted by it and their families of of course now um, uh, i will start with the policy making field because we here in i'm speaking speaking particularly in kuwait that the policy makers of course they have uh, their agenda is full and maybe they don't have enough time to uh, concentrate on on particular issue but by doing by what i'm doing now is uh, by uh, campaigning and uh, try, try to attract their attention to for this uh, devastating disease obviously doctors are uh, fully um, uh, aware and involved and the nurses now we're starting to involve the media and uh, of course some patients especially if they are doctors they are affected by this disease they are the best uh, who can advocate for this uh, prevention of this disease now i give you two examples of uh, existing uh, campaign advocacy, advocacy campaign on, the, on international level there is a group under the wing of european society of gynecology uh, the uh, initiative of european network of gynecology cancer advocacy group they launch every year uh, 20 uh, 20th of september uh, a day of awareness regarding the cervical cancer now at gcc level we starting the same uh, now every year the gulf federation of uh, cancer societies they they held uh, every year a campaign for awareness obviously including healthy staff and uh, employee administrator of health uh, in order to uh, address the prevention uh, of uh, in general cancer but uh, this year of course we have in next week first week of february the kuwait oncology association with all associations all over the gcc uh, we have the uh, cancer awareness week starting from the first to seventh of february and uh, i take the chance in this week to speak about uh, cancer service in particular now how would you assess your current advocacy framework now first you have to ask yourself does your country have a cancer uh, service prevention and control strategy now if you have it good you're doing good job so first you have to identify which section of your policy is missing or not implemented or not working properly now if you don't have it like uh, in Kuwait, for example, I don't have like uh, sort of uh, uh, well-organized uh, strategy. So uh, I need to advocate for, for, for this strategy. Now, then after that, you, first you have to evaluate what's the size of the problem. Like in Kuwait, the Cancer Service Institute always uh, since uh, we started the cancer registry in the last uh, 20 years, it, uh, the, always the incidence is less than four per 100,000. But now, what the problem is that the projection rate. Now we are expecting, according to WHO figures, they are expecting by 2040, the figures will be 40 percent. 40 percent of the figures will be affected. The patient will be, will have cancer cervix, obviously because of many changes culturally, environmental, and uh, socioeconomic. So this is why I'm, try, I'm highlighting on cancer cervix because the projection rate is frightening. Despite um, the presence of uh, screening and prevention and vaccination all, of, all over the world, but still in Kuwait, we are still uh, in the road. Now, so we have to, uh, obviously you have to put your time frame. How long would you take to, to evaluate your strategy plan, uh, awareness plan or advocacy plan? When and what's your vision about it? Um, you will get what's the level of your public support what's the level of your uh, decision maker support uh, it's medium low whatever and who you identify who are your partners and obviously you have to uh, uh, have some financial resources to uh, help you in doing all this work now uh, who is who will be your target according to the WHO they set target audience it is the young adolescents and their families adult women, 
and community leaders and champions. And obviously you have to engage men. The reason that, because the men, they are the one who are transmitted this, the HPV virus, which is the main cause of cancer cervix to the woman. And so first you, you have EUR, they encourage the, the men, their partners, uh, or, their, or the patient partner, sisters, daughters, mothers to get screened for this uh, disease and to get treated or to get vaccinated. Uh, encourage the, the, the men to use condom to prevent all sexually transmitted infection, including HIV, because you know, some, uh, you, as you all know, the condoms offer some protection against the uh, human papilloma virus. And then you advise the men you reduce, to reduce the number of sexual partners if they have and use condom if they have more than one sexual partner. So you have to get the men involved in your campaign. I know it's a disease of women, but it is very important to get the men involved in your campaign. Now, uh, in order to develop your strategy plan, you have comprehensive uh, strategy. I, I, uh, from my point of view, uh, first you have to, ask, to, to make an access to the screening services in your area. And uh, you have to ha a patient have uh, to have access to the treatment and access to vaccination if you have a vaccination program. Obviously, you include the palliative care. You can integrate all this into the family planning or maternal health to make it easy. And then if you have vaccination or screening, you have to assess the cost and how would you reduce this cost, obviously including the palliative care. Uh, in order to do this, you have to have a very well organized functional referral system which links your screening services with the treatment uh, in early cancer, I mean the precancerous lesion, which is the best uh, time to eradicate this disease by doing the the, the smears, the cervical smears, or uh, you have a treatment in the invasive cancer, like when they have, uh, they got referral to the main uh, cancer center in your area. You have to obviously to monitor your work. You have to put monitoring system to track the screening figures, the follow-up treatment, your vaccinations, so you know where do you stand. And then uh, you, if you develop a cancer research agenda, uh, it will be very important because figures don't don't lie. If you have figures, you can have your research and then you can uh, convince people uh, about your work. Now, there are some tips uh, will help you in uh, advocacy communication. Like if you get some patients, like I have a uh, few patients who are, they are already doctors or medical staff, and then they can uh, speak about their stories and the pain they've been through, uh, and the advice how to prevent this uh, cancer. And uh, you have to, to get ready for your arg for arguments and in unexpected opposition in your area, especially in this part of the world, when we have a man dominating society, and it is very uh, emotional, uh, very touchy, uh, this, uh, the, uh, for, the, for, for them to discuss the, um, anything with, uh, with female reproduction or sexuality. But you have to keep your message clear and sustained. You have to keep on going and never give hope. Now, for the facts and figure, of course, you will have each, each area should be ready to prepare their, fa their figures. What's the, uh, what's the, what, how many cases you have per year and what's their, uh, the risk uh, groups you have, uh, do you have them in your area in order to uh, assess the economic cost related to the disease. Now, if you prevent it, of course, it will be much uh, economical than you treat an advanced cancer, uh, plus obviously the psych psychological effect of this uh, cancer, which is it's not affect only the woman, but it will affect the whole family. Uh, one more thing is that you have to reach beyond your cancer community. You know, we, we doctors, medical staff, uh, whatever, we speak to each other uh, enormously and daily. Please go beyond this community because uh, uh, the, the other communities, they don't, they're, they're, they don't have the clear vision as you do. So you have to go beyond your community. And especially if in low income countries, you have to build up capacity and you provide them with even space information and you get uh, involved the partners to include to include them in your uh, cancer prevention uh, to uh, raise funds for this um, campaign 
and uh, you have to uh, i always use this emotional messages to create uh, the the impact you know if you appeal sometimes you have to appeal to the family to the girls to the women uh, in order to take this very seriously now uh, there are uh, for uh, help you in uh, there are some uh, aids to help you in your communication like the booklets i will mention them imam masjid you know here in kuwait uh, or the gcc countries they are muslim countries so they many and many uh, individuals they get affected by the imam of masjids when he talks to the woman he talks to the men so please get him involved obviously you have television debates and press conferences and radios and uh, uh, press release and phone campaigns as well now there are the main challenges for me here is the misinformation i continue to try to tackle this misinformation on the internet many negative media reports social stigma about the cancer and uh, patient are reluctance to discuss their reproductive health in general uh, but i always get uh, i always give them an example when the countries do, do, who have uh, implemented their uh, screen program and the vaccine vaccine they have significantly reduced the uh, burden of the cancer cervix and uh, one example of course now australia which is uh, in the in the good pathway to eradicate this disease other partners you can get you can get uh, you can involve the authors the activists and uh, some support group and uh, the business leaders now in conclusion please, please take time to advocate for this devastating disease for women obviously we know what to do we know how to do it so advocacy and communication intervention both can help to overcome this barrier and please provide scientific evidence to uh, how to uh, about the promise of prevention must be translated in simple language to the audience to non-medical staff to uh, re, uh, obviously you will have it in uh, in their languages whether it's arabic or different other languages Our policies must be adjusted based on your circumstances and new opportunities will come up and uh, the resources must be mobilized to ensure that everyone is protected against this preventable disease thank you very much indeed i come to the end of my presentation Thank you very much, Dr. Imam, uh, for this uh, comprehensive talk. And now we would like to introduce Dr. Fatima Al Hamlan. Dr. Fatima is a scientist in the Infection and Immunity Department at King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center in Riyadh, as well as an assistant professor at the College of Medicine at Al Faisal University in Riyadh. She was a founding member of the Rufaida Women's Health Organization in 2016 and is its vice president. Dr. Fatima holds a master's degree in population genetics from Washington State University and a PhD in microbiology, molecular biology, and biochemistry from University of Idaho. She also completed executive education courses at Harvard Business School and Harvard Medical School's leadership program. Dr. Fatima is currently developing a network to advance women's health, women in STEM, and CSOs within Saudi Arabia and globally. Dr. Fatima uh, will uh, give us a talk about communication strategies to raise awareness, improve social acceptance, and ensure success of elimination efforts. She, uh, we will address her recorded video. Good morning, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you today. I would like to thank the organizers, uh, friends of cancer patients, and all the partners uh, who are working really hard to help in this issue. Uh, we all have this mission to eradicate cervical cancer, and one part of it is the community empowerment and the patient empowerment and to improve the social acceptance of the preventive measure. And that's the only way to ensure the success of the elimination efforts. I'm Fatma Al-Hamlan. I'm wearing two hats today. I'm virologist and I'm working at King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. 
I have been working on HPV and cervical cancer in Saudi for over 10 years. And also we are using this data to advocate for um, the elimination of HPV in Saudi Arabia. And finally, the school uh, vaccination program just started a few months ago in Saudi uh, for females. And hopefully one day we will even vaccinate males. Uh, I'm also the founder of Rufaida Women's Health Organization, which is our advocacy arm, which we will talk about today. So we all share this mission uh, in this forum for two days. We all aspire to um, eradicate cervical cancer, and we would love to reach a nation that's free of cervical cancer. And you cannot reach... Um, you cannot reach that level until you know the current statistics. And if we look at the cervical cancer facts, uh, I'm sure we all know this information as most of the cervical cancer cases are caused by HPV. But the good news is if you look at the international data and the worldwide data, cervical cancer now is became number four. Uh, so that's due to the vaccination, that's due to the cervical screening, uh, which um, improved actually to uh, drop the ranking of cervical cancer. However, our local data in Saudi Arabia, we are seeing different trend. Cervical cancer now is the eighth most frequent cancer in Saudi Arabia. It used to be number 11. And that's a worrisome. That's something that needs to be uh, taken care of and an action has to be taken. And thank God it's taken already and it's in progress. If we look at the GCC, uh, as we all uh, we care uh, in this forum, at least for the GCC region, this is a study that we have done in 2017, I believe. We looked at 14 years of um data from uh, the GCC region. And if you notice at this pie chart, it's not the incident rate of cervical cancer that worry us, but it's the uh, arrival of these cases as they reach the hospital in uh, later stages. So as a result of that, over 48% of cervical cancer cases presented to the hospital in late stages. And what does that mean? Means low survival rate. And this is the something is very important as we see in Saudi Arabia, whenever we are talking about cervical cancer, they would say, oh, well, the incident rate is low. We don't care much about the incident rate if the survival rate is very low. No woman should die of cervical cancer. It's the easiest to prevent, and there is a there is a vaccine, and there is a screening, and there are different tools that can prevent cancer. And this is our mission to advocate for the preventive tools and to educate women uh, to take care of their health and to go ask for the vaccination and also to get screened and get checked. If we look at the outline of this talk, I will be talking about the patient empowerment. I will be talking about the co-production in healthcare and what does that mean? I will talk about uh, the role of NGOs to promote health. This forum is led by an NGO, the uh, Friends of Patient Cancer. They are doing an amazing job and this is their responsibility in the community. We will talk about the role of NGO and how it's value driven and how the NGOs are the voice of people and how they should lead the advocacy to empower the community so they will be active in pursuing the preventive measures and to take care of their health. Our local experience, I will share Rufaida's experience and I will show you our strategy, how we are um, working really hard to um, be part of the elimination effort of cervical cancer. We need to change the culture and what is our future direction? What is patient empowerment? Everyone is talking about patient empowerment. Um, if you look at WHO definition, it basically defines the empowerment as a process through which people gain greater control over a decision. So people, they are in charge of the decision and in order for the patients to be part of this decision, they have to be educated and they have to be equipped with the right knowledge. 
because we always believe empowered patients, they take sound decision and it should help the whole healthcare system. This is the old way. If you look at uh, patients coming in the hospital, usually the patient is uh, in the center where they call it patient-centric hospitals. It turned out to be this is not the good model. We usually uh, send a, a unilateral relation with this patient where we just provide the services. However, what we aspire to be is to reach that level where is uh, the patient is a partner. He's one of the team who should help to take a decision and that should contribute to the best practice. Making informed choices about uh, the treatment and the care they will have better relation. We always believe that if the patient is empowered, he will be more responsible, he will comply, he will adhere to the treatment, and that will result in a better health and that will result in um, a prevention of the diseases. That's why, as we talk now, uh, we have to talk to our community and they have to join this conversation to be part of it and to be responsible with us towards uh, a nation free of cervical cancer. I will talk also about the co-production. So the model I showed you, it's kind of a co-production in healthcare system where the patients are partners, they are informed, they are part of the medical team and that will provide the best service. It's exactly like a customer service. It's exactly like a business where you care about the customer and you always ask for his opinion and his feedback to serve him with a good product. This is the same thing should happen in the hospitals where the patients, they are part of the healthcare system and that's where we need to work together to have the best outcome and the best treatment that patients need. So the approach, as I mentioned before, it's a value driven, driven and it's built on the principle that those who are affected by a service are best placed to help to design it. We need to listen to our patients and let them be part of this mission. If we look at the framework of the co-production model, it's basically you have the patients and you have the clinicians and you have the infrastructure and the, the system that support this relationship. Having those three arms working together to co-produce a service that will give you the best innovative service, cost-effective, and everyone is happy and the patients are complying and adhering to the treatment. They are aware, they are part of your strategy. You cannot design a strategy without having the, the most important stakeholder in your strategy, who is the patient and women in this case. So that's why we are working really hard to incorporate this model in our system. So what are the principles of co-production? How we reach that level of co-production and working closely with our community? It's basically, we have to recognize that people are assets and we need to work together with them and our strategy wouldn't work without them. Also building on people's capability, uh, developing two ways, reciprocal um, relationships where we have to understand with respect, with um, high level of communication. Sometimes we underestimate patients and we think they don't know, they don't understand. We have to develop a language and articulate it in a way patients will understand our language. And also we have to encourage peer support and also we have to eliminate the boundaries. We have to op have an open conversation with the patients and we have to educate them. We have to direct them from where they get the accurate information. Our problem right now is the misinformation and especially with the HPV as a sensitive topic, as um, a sensitive topic in conservative society. It's really hard, anyone can, um, 
uh, stop this dialogue between people in the community because it's a taboo, because we should not talk in about it. We are not promiscuous. This is not for us. We don't have any sexual transmitted infections. So all this misinformation circulating, we have to end it in uh, a scientific way, yet uh, a friendly way that the community would understand and gain our trust. And um, uh, we have to build this trust by uh, circulating the accurate information and trusted information. And that cannot be done without the non-government organizations, without the civil societies. I always believe the civil societies, they have a huge role in the community. And again, as I mentioned before, we are the voice of people and people, they trust us and they listen to us and we should listen to them as we are advocating for them. Whatever questions they have, we are the one who talks to the uh, policymakers and try to um, facilitate things and provide them with the best services that will help us all to eliminate cervical cancer. Worldwide, NGOs play an instrument instrumental role in global health, as you all know. Uh, and also they master the community empowerment. Um, every NGO in every country, they should know their community and they need to set their priorities. And also, um, when you are advocating for something, you have to uh, support it with policy and improved health practices. It's not like... Um, only given uh, health information or brochures or videos. No, it has to be actually uh, at advanced level where you really transform the policies and support. Um, uh, in our case, it's women women's health. Also, the NGOs have contributed to the development of community around the world. Uh, usually, um, NGOs, they are part of uh, other entities in each country, although they have to remain independent from the government. And this is how they gain the trust of people, uh, usually NGOs, when it comes to uh, education awareness, they are more um, trusty and legit. So the current community empowerment methods by the NGOs, it's um, underlying the understanding uh, understanding the role of the patient. When the patient in the co-production model, he needs to understand exactly what is his role in that part. Uh, again, the NGOs should educate the patients and also the NGOs should be part of um, the, the design of the co-production as uh, they can explain to the patients what's expected and what's not. Uh, health literacy, in our case, we are talking about HPV. There are so many misinformation, and uh, this is our job to clarify and simplify the, uh, the information. Digital literacy, uh, HPV, mainly we care about the youngsters, uh, so we have to uh, develop creative programs that target the young population. Uh, so, uh, again, things are getting updated uh, more frequently now uh, with the policy, with the dosing, with the information. So we have to provide our community with the best information, coping skill also, and the shared decision making and the presence of facilitating environment. What, one thing we have noticed when you educate a patient and give him the information if they go to the hospital with this information and they find out, well, that service, it's not even um, uh, present or they don't have it or it's not accessible, uh, you are killing your message here. And uh, this is something we have to be really careful before we educate for something. We would we have to be sure it's accessible. It's there. Uh, it happened to us in Saudi with the HPV vaccination. We keep talking about HPV vaccination. However, it was not available in Saudi. So you cannot you cannot do this to your community. You have to be sure if you are raising awareness with certain things, be sure it's provided by either the government or the private. 
I will talk about our local experience with uh, Rufaida, Rufaida Women's Health Organization. It's um, an NGO in Saudi Arabia. As the name implies, it's about women's health, but a huge part of Rufaida's work is on HPV and cervical cancer. Uh, so the need is very high as the information about HPV in Saudi is very minimal. And um, it was not easy to talk about, so the need is very high. Uh, Rufaida positioned itself to be um, advocate for women's health, HPV and cervical cancer in particular. We have a great relation with the policymakers. We have our annual forum where we come up with our studies and with our recommendations that we take it um, to the policymakers. And this is our um, effect on uh, uh, policy that will improve women's health. Here is, uh, since we are talking about the strategy, how to eliminate cervical cancer, our experience with Rufaida is um, we have different uh, arms when it comes to uh, awareness. Uh, on HPV, we have to be creative and we have to target different segments of the community as the age varies. Uh, so we have to develop content for social media campaigns, advocacy, uh, where we um, talk to the policymakers. We have to do our own studies. We have to come up with our recommendation. University talks, uh, we always go. In Saudi, we have one university, it's only for ladies, but also we have other private and government uh, universities where we go and give talks and have this open platform where we can get questions and answer their questions in the presence of uh, the experts. Rufaida Unfiltered Talk, uh, this is an online platform. It's an Instagram, anyone can join. And I hope uh, this is Rufaida's account, please join as there is um, a fresh uh, uh, talk just happened a few days ago with Dr. Ismail Al-Badawi. Uh, again, it was open since it's an Instagram. We get lots of questions as women, they feel free uh, to ask questions. It's anonymous. If you want to join with your name, that's fine. But we give this platform to just get uh, questions. We care about the information more than um, your identity or the identity of the uh, uh, person who is asking. And this is actually something that we really developed in Rufaida. It's like um, we are safe place to ask and we are not going to judge any question you have. As the name said, it's unfiltered talk. It's sensitive issues. We know no one talks about it. Just to please uh, bring it on and we will answer your questions uh, and the experts will answer your questions. Uh, here is the social media campaign. We have hundreds of infographics, um, correcting and rectifying some wrong information, giving more information. It's easy to um, uh, download and it's easy to send by WhatsApp different um, messages. We try to make it short. We need, we sometimes add some links to websites. We write uh, scientific articles that's um, written in a simple way. As you can see, the post engagement is over 35,000 in this January, and the engagement is really high. There is a video. I would invite everyone to scan the barcode. Uh, there is a video that um, just released like uh, a few weeks ago. And again, it talks about um, HPV um, elimination. And since it's just started in school, we are trying to encourage everyone as we are getting circulating messages by WhatsApp, uh, people are um, um, warning others from taking this vaccine. I'm sure in the GCC region, they are sharing the same um, concern as we get random messages from people who is warning the others. People sometimes they tend to listen to these messages. Our role is, um, to um, uh, clarify these messages and also send the accurate information. Uh, here is uh, unfiltered talk with uh, Dr. Anada Munshi and Dr. Ismail Badawi, as I mentioned, they are all experts in the HPV. Here is uh, Al Faisal University's talk. The best way is to go to the students and get their questions and um, explain everything to them. 
more universities in Saudi that we are planning uh, to talk about. And also the awareness station, uh, we also provide all the information, not only um, uh, stations and booths, but also we have um, a rich website that has all the information needed. Our mission is no women should die of cervical cancer. The prevention is there. And our role, we have to be active to educate women and um, utilize all the platforms that we have to end cervical cancer. Thank you so much. And I would be more than happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Fatima, for your comprehensive talk. And now we would like to introduce Ms. Radhika Srivastav. Ms. Radhika is the senior director at uh, Reday, a nonprofit organization engaged in multidisciplinary research, capacity building, and campaigns linked to the prevention and control of NCDs. Ms. Radhika leads the secretariat of the Healthy India Alliance that fosters engagement of multisectoral CSOs to address NCDs through meaningful involvement of CSOs, people living with NCDs and young people. Mrs. Radhika holds two master's degrees in nutrition and public health. Uh, welcome, Ms. Radhika, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll, uh, thank you so much uh, for having me. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much to FOCP for uh, giving this opportunity uh, to Hriday and to the Healthy mm -hmm. India Alliance uh, to uh, participate in this uh, uh, consultation. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I was listening to the presentations of Dr. Iman and Dr. Fatima with a lot of interest. Um, and uh, much of what they said um, is uh, applied to the work uh, that we do here in India. Uh, before I start my presentation, uh, I'd like to clarify that I'm not a medical doctor and definitely not a, a cervical cancer uh, specialist or expert. Um, our work is as a civil society organization promoting um, NCD prevention and control among uh, young people in, in India, but given, uh, you know, as, uh, uh, in, within our coalition, there are a lot of organizations who work on cancer prevention and control, and also with a focus on NCD uh, or, or a focus on cervical cancer. What we are now trying to attempt to do is, uh, you know, integrate cervical cancer prevention messaging into broader NCD uh, and messaging. And that is what I'm uh, going to be talking to you about uh, today. Uh, so we are really looking here in this presentation on, uh, you know, what 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 are youth uh, centric uh, interventions, and how uh, have they been uh, successful in bringing about uh, changes in NCD uh, policies uh, in in our country, and how we can learn from those experiences, and as we try to, um, you know, develop uh, more, uh, you know. Uh, uh, a program which is more focused on, uh, sorry, I think there's an issue with my screen share. Uh, can I get the prompt again, please, to share my screen? Yes, just click on the screen, you can see it. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, so uh, uh, essentially uh, our engagement with youth uh, has been uh, fr from a perspective of understanding individual uh, risk factors, uh, uh, interpersonal risk factors, and how does their environment influence their behaviors? And looking at it from a risk factor perspective, what are uh, the individual behaviors, the community level interventions, and the policies and programs overall that can uh, promote healthy and uh, safe behaviors? And this is a model that we have, I will take the example in my country for tobacco control, and how now slowly and steadily, like I said, we are trying to apply this for um, cervical cancer work uh, as well. So firstly, most important, uh, uh, the lesson that we have learned is that uh, the uh, 
any, any work that we do uh, on health promotion interventions has to be evidence driven. And this is, for example, uh, uh, you know, this was several years back when our government was uh, developing a national tobacco control program and they did not include any youth component in the program. They were talking about different things, but there was no mention of youth engagement uh, in the program. And that is when we shared our um, research findings uh, from large scale group randomized control trials, which were looking at um, uh, you know, which resulted in reduction in, in prevalence of tobacco use among school going adolescents that we were able to advocate with them to include a school health component and talk about capacity building of youth uh, as advocates for tobacco control. Um, and so uh, our work has really evolved in translating evidence to action. And so right from the individual level, we look at uh, what youth can do in the local communities, what can they do at the national level, and then of course, what can they do at the regional um, as well as the global level, and um, you know, engaging them as youth-led uh, multi-stakeholders uh, interventions of community uh, mobilization. Uh, so again, uh, you know, just some examples uh, of our school posters. Uh, you know, building their skills to first look at what tobacco-free schools and homes can uh, look like, and then building their capacities to look at, uh, you know, uh, implementing laws uh, so or around tobacco-free educational institutions. Um, you know, building capacities to talk about policies uh, at their level. So undertaking a student's parliament on health and what are the policies um, that are, uh, you know, deficient in, in our country and how can, uh, you know, what are the laws that need to be amended or new laws that need to be passed. So through these um, innovative strategies, we build their capacities uh, to be able to advocate in real world settings and i'd like to share an example of that uh, is uh, in india when um, we were fighting for large and effective pictorial health warnings in our country um, there was a delay of more than two years and it was our youth advocates who eventually uh, took the bet on in their hands and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, spoke to public health experts spoke to our policymakers and advocated for uh, you know, getting stronger in, uh, pictorial health warnings. And eventually, of course, with a lot of support from civil society, um, there was a lot of pressure on the government and eventually we were able to get uh, pictorial health warnings. Uh, another, uh, you know, and then, then the next level is about, again, through this journey of advocacy, um, also uh, building their capacities to represent uh, voices of global youth. Um, and so, for example, talking about uh, end game. So, for example, talking about tobacco end game. And so if you see that, you know, right from individual level uh, interventions, we are slowly and seeing uh, steadily over the years, seeing the trickling of uh, the, the efforts from bottom up. So they start at a very small level and then they build their capacities to go uh, up to uh, advocating at the global level as well. Um, and this is a campaign that we had launched a couple of years back, which was, was the No More uh, Tobacco and 21 Century um, campaign. This is closer to... Uh, uh, you know, your region in 2015, um, uh, Abu Dhabi had hosted the uh, 16th World Conference on Tobacco or Health, and it is these global advocates at that platform where, uh, you know, they spoke about, uh, you know, building uh, tobacco-free uh, future generations. Um, uh, so moving forward, another very important thing that we've realized is, and uh, both uh, Dr. Fatima and Dr. Iman uh, spoke about misinformation. Uh, and in the case of cervical cancer, we've realized that one, of course, is misinformation, which is, you know, more socially driven because, um, you know, it's it's something which is a sensitive topic. Many uh, times it is considered taboo and uh, the situation is not very different here in India. Uh, uh, you know, as compared to your region, we also face um, a similar uh, situation here. But what we have also tried to do is uh, let young people identify what are, uh, you know, why are they being targeted and how, um, 
you know, they need to look beyond uh, the, the misinformation, so to say. So, for example, if the tobacco industry is glamorizing uh, the use of uh, tobacco products, how can they uh, go and monitor and, and, and look at shops and say that, OK, this, you know, the, these are violations and this is something which, uh, you know, they are blatantly targeting young people and we as, um, uh, you know, as uh, advocates need to take charge. Um, so uh, that's again one strategy. The other is about building and sustaining uh, global youth networks. So again, um, uh, we bring young people from across uh, the globe, uh, so youth from about 30, 35 countries convene and talk about common issues. Uh, one thing we realized is that it's very important to give them a broader perspective about it's not just their country or their state or their city. Um, or their community or their family who faces um, these public health challenges. It is, you know, many of these challenges are global in nature and we all need to learn and share from uh, each other's uh, experiences. Um, so, uh, you know, this is the last Global Youth Meet on Health, which we organized during the COVID times and we're very happy that there was very strong participation uh, from youth uh, in your region um, as well. Um, Capacity building, again, is something which is very, very essential. Um, we have uh, uh, been working very closely with the WHO office in our region, as well as with the UNICEF to uh, build youth networks, to uh, uh, build their capacities on uh, how, how they can uh, sort of uh, make a difference. Um, now, coming down, so what I've done is, in a, you know, tried to give a snapshot of how we can look at uh, you know, examples of the work that we have been doing up until now and, you know, translating that into cervical uh, cancer prevention, typically from the point of view of an organization who has been broadly working on NCD prevention and control, uh, but are, we are just about starting, um, you know, some dedicated work on cervical cancer. So just to give a very briefly a scenario in our country, um, uh, cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in um, among women in India, and I think uh, you would have heard this uh, similar statements uh, across the yesterday and probably even later today. Um, India contributes to the largest uh, uh, global burden of uh, cervical cancer, and um, uh, you know it's it's it accounts for nearly one in every four deaths. Uh, globally when it comes to cervical cancer. And so we've realized that, uh, you know, as an as a NCD community, uh, we need to start talking more uh, openly about uh, cervical cancer in India. And why has this, um, uh, you know, why is the time opportune for us? So uh, it, the last year uh, was when, uh, you know, like um, uh, Dr. Fatima also spoke about the uh, immunization um, and vac HPV vaccination in Saudi Arabia, uh, India has also now um, uh, announced that girls aged 9 to 14 will get cervical cancer vaccines uh, through the, their schools. Uh, uh, and Dr. Fatima made a very, very important point about uh, whatever messaging we uh, give to our communities, they will be very disappointed if you know those services are not available and so this is uh, the uh, what you see uh, this um, the indian cervical cancer vaccine was just launched yesterday and so it's it's uh, i mean it, I, I just included it this in my slide this morning because um, you know, it was just a coincidence that I was going to talk at this forum, and then uh, this is a development that took place yesterday. Uh, the, the, the Ministry of Health has also roped in the Ministry of Education, and we have something which is known as the Central Board of Secondary Education uh, in our country, under which the majority of the schools across the country are affiliated. So the CBSC, as they are called, have now, uh, you know, released a circular that these girls will get vaccinated and there needs to be, uh, you know, uh, the actual rollout of the vaccine is going, is anticipated to start only uh, from the mid of this year. But, uh, you know, we have already started uh, receiving uh, messages from schools because they're absolutely frantic because, uh, you know, uh, there is, of course, a lot of misinformation about it. Uh, schools are very apprehensive. How How is it going to be targeted? Um, 
teachers, school principals themselves don't know uh, about the issue of cervical cancer. And so slowly and steadily uh, with our uh, uh, you know, uh, organizations in India who work on cancer prevention and control, who have years of experience in working in cervical cancer, we are now trying to roll out um, a campaign in schools so that before the vaccine is introduced, there is uh, you know, some movement which is created, which you know, slowly and steadily reduces the hesitancy uh, to uh, take the vaccine. So um, uh, something that we are uh, very, very committed to uh, in terms of working um, in India under the broader umbrella of NCD prevention and control. Um, in terms of um, lessons learned, uh, I would say what are some of the uh, you know uh, points that we're bearing in our mind as we try and roll out this work is of course meaningful involvement of youth is essential instead of just a you know tokenistic uh, engagement. Uh, the need to be involved uh, in uh, developing and co-designing and co-producing, again, something that uh, Dr. Fatima spoke about beautifully. Um, again, engaging young people, not just as beneficiaries, but also as key stakeholders. Um, you know, we've understood that youth-led approaches uh, yield better uh, outcomes versus youth-centric approaches where we are working for them and not with them. Uh, we are looking at uh, developing and testing and scaling up evidence-based in, uh, you know, interventions to promote healthy behaviors, which uh, will, um, you know, be supportive of uh, cervical cancer prevention and eventually, of course, uh, elimination. Um, again, tapping into youth expertise for normalizing discussions on cervical cancer uh, and, you know, promoting up, uh, uptake of the vaccines, encouraging screening as per whatever guidelines are. Uh, there, um, engaging the families and communities to address uh, myths and misconceptions so that eventually, like I said, when the vaccine is a role, a vaccination uh, plan is rolled out, then, you know, th there is a demand uh, to go and receive those vaccination. Uh, promoting peer leadership and youth uh, networks to create movement around cervical cancer prevention. Um, and uh, interventions and messaging, again, something um, I keep referring back to my uh, previous speakers because uh, you know I, I I was those thoughts that they was making were resonating so well with me um, and Dr. Fatima spoke about uh, you know keeping the interventions and me uh, messages gender neutral, engaging uh, the boys, engaging the men as uh, you know, advocates for uh, cancer, uh, cervical cancer uh, prevention. And of course, uh, you know, also developing strategies on how to integrate cervical cancer messaging in broader NCD prevention and control interventions that we do. So if you're, you know, if you're talking about, um, you know, broader NCD, so if you're talking about broader cancers or cardiovascular diseases, respiratory uh, diseases, um, diabetes, mental health conditions, uh, you know, uh, we intend to now specifically start talking about cervical cancer because when we are talking about even cancers in India, uh, broadly, uh, we would talk about uh, breast cancer, we would talk about oral cancers, but again, cervical cancer is something which is right now, you know, the way we see it, it's just a bullet point. And we, you know, from that bullet point, we want to sort of make it at the front and center of, uh, you know, uh, Im uh, important NCD prevention and control uh, priorities in the country uh, and the community and, uh, you know, utilizing the expertise of young people uh, in those uh, efforts. So uh, that's uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your interest and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Mr. Radhika, for your uh, comprehensive talk. And now I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Fathia Salama. Ms. Fathia Salama is a director of pharmacy in a leading healthcare organization. She worked for 22 years in pharmacy field and she specialized in activation of uh, uh, new healthcare services. She was awarded a star of excellence in healthcare quality and she implemented the first digital pharmacy in Qatar. She's now leading campaigns to raise awareness about HPV vaccine and cervical cancer screening. Uh, uh, Ms. Fathia will go through a nice topic entitled the importance of early screening and impact of communication delays. 
Ms. Fathia, the floor is, your, is yours. Yeah, so I'd like to start my talk oh. with some uh, HPV uh, or uh, human papillomavirus facts. We have almost uh, more than 600,000 uh, women uh, diagnosed with, uh, with uh, cervical cancer per year uh, in worldwide due to uh, uh, HPV-related uh, cervical cancer. 80% uh, uh, of, of the population around the world uh, will get infected by uh, HPV at some point of their life. Uh, there are uh, 79 million uh, population currently in, uh, infected with the HPV in the United States only. 14 million uh, uh, cases is expected annually in the States as well uh, to be infected with the HPV. Can cervical cancer be found early? Uh, yes, if uh, all the uh, women uh, uh, is uh, encouraged to do the uh, pap smear uh, as per the uh, guidelines, then uh, we can find the precancerous cells or we can prevent the, uh, the cervical cancer uh, by finding it uh, very, very early because when, unfortunately, when cervical cancer found in a later stage, usually it's in uh, another uh, uh, part of the body and then the treatment is becoming very hard. Uh, we have almost uh, half uh, of the 600,000 uh, uh, infection infected uh, women. Uh, they lost their life due to the uh, late, uh, uh, late diagnosis. So I would like to share my story. Uh, so uh, in, uh, 2000, in uh, uh, 2021, I was diagnosed with uh, uh, precancer cells or carcinoma in situ and HPV type 16 high risk. Uh, the thing the, uh, that I found it by incidence, uh, I was doing like a general checkup uh, for my health and uh, the physician at that time, she advised me to do a pap smear. And to be honest with you, despite the fact that I'm a healthcare provider, uh, I was like hesitant doing it because I don't have any symptoms. So I thought it's unnecessary um, intervention. And then uh, she uh, she was like, uh, you know, advising me strongly to do it since I didn't do it sen since more than 10 or 15 years. And uh, I missed it for 10 or 15 years. Uh, and, and I did it. And to be honest, I wasn't following up on my... Um, on my result, assuming uh, it's going to be normal because I have no symptoms. But uh, I got a call uh, from her uh, three days back uh, and uh, the result was shocking because she said immediately we need to do uh, a colposcopy and the colposcopy came back having uh, the precancerous or the SEN3 with HPV uh, 16, which is the high risk uh, virus that causes cervical cancer, and I have a big lesion uh, uh, with the uh, with the SEN3. So I did the uh, uh, a surgery removing the precancerous uh, cells, and I was advised to do uh, a colposcopy every six months, plus the HPV uh, uh, test. And uh, the good news that my uh, latest uh, uh, colposcopy, uh, there was no uh, sign of the disease. So all the they removed uh, all the cells, and um, there was no sign that uh, there is an HPV uh, infection. So it looks like my body get uh, get rid of it somehow. Uh, and after this, I become an HPV advocate uh, because. Uh, HPV is a sexually transmitted disease, but uh, uh, I was like facing a challenge during my journey. My first, uh, my first friend, she's a uh, opigyna herself, and I was talking to her about my diagnosis, and she said, "Do not uh, mention this to anyone." And to be honest, that makes me uh, very uh, curious about knowing why. I am a victim. I am a patient. And I feel that 
there is no one like my right as a patient to be treated and to be speaking about about the disease and then i started to dig more in the researches and as a healthcare provider i have all the access to the literature uh, originally like i'm a clinical pharmacist so i know how to evaluate uh, research uh, you know a literature and go through uh, all the details and studies and i find that uh, hpv yeah, yes it can uh, mainly be transmitted as uh, uh, by, sec by sexual transmitted disease, but there are some studies, new studies, that it can be also transmitted in um, in other ways, like uh, you know, contaminated uh, 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 tools or whatever. So, and also in children, it's there in kids. So I feel that there is no shame about uh, talking about it, and even uh, the most important information that HPV is not uh, that no one can really detect why uh, you are infected or when so i'll share some of the thing uh okay, where is the okay uh so the arrow is not moving something went wrong oh yeah so why i become an hpv uh, uh, vaccine advocate i have four kids one daughter and four boys and i decided uh, with them of course with, with engaging them in the in the in the in the, in the story to uh, get the vaccine and they are going to get the vaccine and um, i'm going to uh, the plan uh, uh, with the with the with the hospital that they are going to administer the vaccine to the kids to be to, to record everything so i started uh, uh, a social media uh, you know uh, in, in instagram as i know that many patients really using now social media and the power of social media is very high to uh, 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 you know to send a message to the public and i started talking about my journey uh, the challenges i'm facing correcting some of the misconception about the uh, HPV and here is a sh very short reel that yeah الاحصائيات العالميه اثبتت ان احنا بنفقد سيده كل دقيقتين بسبب سرطان عنق الرحم سرطان عنق الرحم هو اخطر انواع السرطان اللي بتصاب بيه السيدات عالميا بيتم تشخيص 600000 حاله سنويا غالبا نص الحالات بتتوفى دي مش مجرد ارقام دي ممكن تكون اختي امي صديقتي ضروري ان كلنا نتكاتف ونتعاون مع بعض عشان ننشر الوعي المجتمعي باهميه التطعيم ضد فيروس الورم التلايم البشري عشان نقدر نقضي على سرطان عنق الرحم وننقذ ارواح كتير So this is one of the of the uh, of the short videos that I did also, I was invited uh, by the WHO uh, in launching the original uh, cervical cancer elimination strategy, and uh, I shared uh, my story and uh, there and uh, you know because I do believe in empowering the patients. Patients talking to patients is very important. Uh, healthcare providers talking to patients is also important. But I feel that uh, when the patient will see other patients talking, they will be encouraged. Uh, to talk as well about it we really need to remove the shame and the uh, you know the taboo uh, behind this hpv hpv uh, virus is like any other disease there is there should be no shame about it uh, it's very dangerous because it can cause cervical cancer and other cancers as well in um, in, uh, in in uh, in women and men and uh, it's very important for us to uh, to empower the patients to talk about their experience and uh, and uh, and their journey because once they start talking you will find the gaps uh, uh, from from their experience plus if we stop talking about the hpv and make it taboo in our culture this will kill the topic if if we don't speak about something then there is no disease and this is not, not the reality the disease is there it's very common it's very uh, uh you know common in both male and female and also kids and we cannot really uh, stop talking about it because it's a sexual transmitted disease so uh this i'll just share a few seconds and from uh, أنا أولادي يعني هم لما عرفوا الموضوع أنا سبت لهم حرية الاختيار وهم they they went يعني هم الحمد لله well educated below 19 
عندي 19 years وعندي 16 و14 و12 فهم they, uh, they go through literature uh, كمان uh, كان uh, قروا كتير عن الموضوع والحقيقه هم نفسهم اللي جم طلبوا التطعيم انا ما حبيتش ان انا في فورس عليهم او اضغط عليهم في حاجه هم ممكن يكونوا خايفين منها لكن هم uh, uh, كانوا مؤمنين بالرساله والحمد لله انا الاسره عندي العائله وكلهم كانوا فيري سبورتيف للانيشيتيف انه اتكلم وبدات في السوشيال ميديا انه اعمل مور اويرنس وكامبينز انه اتكلم عن الموضوع واشجع السيدات على الكشف المبكر وعلى ان ما فيش حاجه تخليكي ما تروحيش تعملي المسحه ما فيش لانه هي ما بتاخدش دقيقه في العياده مجانيه في معظم الدول كمان يعني هتنقذ حياتك Uh, لو اكتشفتي و... و there is nothing wrong ما فيش شيم ما فيش خجل ان انت تقولي ان انا مصابه لانه uh, في 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 so many ways ان انت ممكن يكون جالك و... وممكن وال... والفيروس ده اصلا شائع جدا يعني almost 80 او 90% من البشر بيصابوا فيه في فتره yeah. ان uh, انا عندي اربع اولاد so uh, yeah so i started to correct some of the uh, misconceptions in the um, in our uh, culture about the uh, hpv uh, virus uh, so the, the, this is from my experience you know talking to patients so if my partner has an hpv this means that uh, she was uh, you know cheating me or he was cheating me or and and unfortunately some of the women is starting to point fingers toward their partner and uh, they reach a stage that uh, you find families falling apart because of the diagnosis this is totally wrong hpv can be there in the body for years even before you are getting married or before you started your relationship with with your partner so it's unfair to point fingers and say okay i'm infected today this means that you cheated me yesterday or you uh, yesterday this is this is not uh, uh, this is not correct and the nature of the virus itself needs to be uh, clarified to the public more to understand that this that this virus can live uh, for decades in your body and then due to any uh, reason like your immunity went down for any reason it starts to uh, uh, to be active in uh, in your body after being uh, dormant for so many years so this is uh, this is very important because it really affects uh, you know our community uh, relationship and the marriage and many families actually uh, falling apart having kids uh, due to the uh, due to due to being uh, diagnosed uh, about the virus. So it's, it's very important to talk to partners uh, once um, the diagnosis is there. It's very important as well to have a kind of education and a kind of counseling, family counseling, with the uh, with the with the with the part with the, you know with the husband and wife together to uh, let them understand uh, this the nature of the disease in order to keep this family you know, together and not to fall apart because of a misconception or, wrong, or, or a wrong information. Uh, HPV is a rare infection. So many, many, many of the, of the women, when you talk, uh, or the men, when I start talking with them, they think that I'm the only one who have the HPV. Uh, this is not correct. So HPV, uh, more than 80% and all the researchers uh, is now talking that HPV is going to be infecting uh, 90 or, or 80, 80 to 90% of the population around the world. Plus, uh, it's, it's very hard to, there's no test for men. And, uh, and I feel that many men, they have also the, they are carrying the, the, the HPV virus without having uh, uh, symptoms. So, uh, so it's not a rare infection. I mean, any any one of us will will be infected at some point of their life, and that's why we need to educate the public that they need to have the uh, to be vaccinated at early, uh, uh, you know, uh, as soon as possible, and then vaccinate their kids uh, from nine uh, uh, years uh, to uh, twenty six, and uh, like the full vaccination needs to be given because. Uh, you are protecting them from the cancer and also we're 100 percent almost 100 percent sure that they are going to get the infection at some point of their life 
So women with abnormal pap tests should get their male partner to test for the HPV. Also, this is a question that I got from the public. There is no, as, an, as, as I mentioned earlier, there is no test uh, for male for the HPV. And that's why the only way to protect the male is to, uh, from cancer is to vaccinate them. For a woman, uh, even if she missed the uh, opportunity to be vaccinated for any reason, uh, still the pap, uh, pap smear can, uh, you know, save her life uh, from cancer. If, if she's uh, following up with the pap smear uh, regularly, then she can uh, be diagnosed early enough be before she, uh, she gets in trouble with the cervical cancer and before the cervical cancer become in a, a later stage. But for men, unfortunately, the only way to protect them against uh, the cancer is to uh, uh, get the vaccine because there is no test for men to, uh, you know, to check if they have uh, the virus uh, or not. Uh, also, things that I'm trying to, uh, you know, to let all, all women uh, should know about is um, a woman don't need to feel uh, ashamed about HPV. It doesn't mean that you are uh, you you were diagnosed with the HPV that you did something wrong. Um, you're right as a patient uh, that to be treated, and you're right as a patient that the the, the doctor shouldn't really question you uh, some personal questions, uh, uh, and you 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 don't have to answer them. Uh, your right as a patient is to be treated uh, and to get the vaccine and to be screened. Also, it doesn't mean that you are carrying the HPV, that you did something, uh, you know, against the, the culture belief. It's, uh, it can be dormant in your uh, body for so many years. You can get it while you are a kid and then diagnosed uh, later in life. So it's, it doesn't mean any that you did any any kind of behavior that the culture can uh, can uh, point finger on you, on you. Uh, so hpv uh, virus doesn't only cause cervical cancer and uh, that's uh, this is something that uh, the woman uh, 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 you know they say okay if I, what if i remove my uh, my cervix or did i like um a prophylactic surgery so i protect myself but we can say that also hpv is linked to other cancers as well like the head and neck uh, cancer and the throat so uh, there are so many other cancers that hpv is linked uh, to so we need to take the vaccine to protect us not only from cervical cancer from, but from other cancers as well the vaccine saves life. Yes, uh, the vaccine will save your life definitely. It's effective uh, for uh, for protecting you. Uh, uh, almost 90% uh, effective to protect you from the uh, the uh, uh, the cervical cancer and other cancers. And but it doesn't mean that we need to uh, rely on the vaccine only. Even if you miss the opportunity to be vaccinated due to your age, do not miss the. Pap smear. So both of them needs to be in parallel uh, to to fully protect you from the uh, cervical cancer. Thank you for listening, and uh, I hope that uh, that you enjoyed uh, the talk. Thank you very much, Ms. Fathia, for this uh, nice presentation. And uh, now. Uh, we will have a coffee break for 15 minutes and we will resume our forum at 11.35 uh, sharp UAE time. Please stay, stay online. Good morning everybody and ho hope you had a lovely coffee break. Now we will resume our forum with the fourth theme covering the topic of shared experiences from the healthcare field in the EMR region. Uh, this theme will be covered by Dr. Mohamed Benazouz from Morocco and then followed by a panel discussion. We would like to introduce Dr. Mohamed Benazouz. He's a medical doctor with a master's degree in health administration and public health department of health program management, National Institute of Health Administration. Dr. Azouz, he, he was the head of 
the National Immunization Program and since 2022, head of the Child Health Protection Department. Dr. Muhammad is a member of the National Technical and Scientific Advisory Committee on Immunization, the National Scientific Committee for the elaboration of the vaccine strategy against SARS-CoV-2, several ADHOC committees related to immunization, InfoVac Morocco, with several representations of his country, of the meetings with WHO and UN. Dr. Azouz, Ben Azouz, welcome, and the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a great uh, opportunity for me uh, to share with you the experience of Morocco in the uh, introduction of the HPV vaccine in the national program. Let me to share with you the screen. It's okay. Yes, doctor. Thank you. By the way, we are in Morocco, we are talking about uh, more than uh, 13 million of women aged 15 years and, old and, and over who are at risk of developing cervical cancer in Morocco. Per year, approximately 3,000 cases are expected of cervical cancer and about 2,000 deeds. Cervical cancer is the third female cancer with an incidence of 9.5 new cases by 100,000. 100, Several studies have showed that the prevalence of the HPV infection in Morocco varies by regions and group, uh, groups, human status of VAH, nature of the sample and histological grade. Given this information, and in the absence of the specific interventions to prevent cervical cancer, we will unfortunately end up with an alarming figure by 2030. We will approach the figure of 500 women who are at risk of dying following cervical cancer, of course, all, of, of, of course of all, this could generate in terms of drama. Vaccination, vaccination against HPV is included in the strategic plans of the Ministry of Health since, since the first cancer plan development until, uh, in 2010 until, until the last government declaration in uh, 2021. Several strategies and plans have mentioned the uh, to need to introduce the HPV vaccine into the national immunization program, given the interest it can generate. This intervention aligns with the global strategy to eliminate cervical cancer by 2030. This strategy is based on three objectives or bands, a shift of coverage rate of over the 19% of girl, girls under 19, ensure uh, adequate screening or more than 19% uh, of women between 35 and 30, 35 years old, provide care, care of um, to more than 19% of diagnosed women. The introduction of HPV into the national immunization program, therefore, followed several steps. First of all, from uh, 2010, several meetings of the National Committee of Vaccination World Health, which ruled on approved the introduction of this vaccination in the national schedule. An introduction and communication plan were developed in 2021, and there was the acquisition of the vaccine. In 2022, the vaccination strategy was revised in September and in September of the same year, there was the deployment of all means and all resources to launch this vaccination, which was actually launched in October of last year. To ensure this vaccination, major acceptability study have been carried out, the first during 2015, and which showed encouraging results of regards uh, the acceptance of mothers at around 
76%, and the acceptance of fathers is around 69%. The reasons given are the fact that the vaccine prevents cancer and the safety of the vaccine. The second study carried out concerned 150 persons and was carried out in 2021 during the period of the vaccination against COVID. This survey showed that the opinion uh, is subdivided into four segments or groups. The first segment represents 24 percent. They are the people said to be disconnected. This is to say that they have no information either on the vaccine or the disease or the co uh, coincidentally means of the prevention and uh, in the occurrence the vaccine. The second segment is a group called the pedants. It's the patient who said that know everything and claims, for example, they were in a va they, 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 uh, that there, there is a vaccine for all diseases, such as hypertension, diabetes, and other disease. The third segment represents 19%. That's the people who are worried. Uh, those are the people who need to reassure, uh, reassure the, with, cl with clear message about vaccination. And the third segment, the serine, are people who have clear idea about the disease, the virus, and means of prevention. We asked several questions to the represented respondents, and we choose the most uh, important namely of cause of cancer. As we can see, the vast majority of people believe that cervical cancer is due to sexual relations, a lack of agents or a genetics problem, while the problem of uh, causality between the virus, uh, HPV virus and cancer is not responded by only 1% of respondents. The second question concerns the means of prevention against cancer of uh, the cervix. The majority mentioned that it's a problem of hygiene, either physical or food, uh, but vaccination is mentioned in only 4% uh, per person of these uh, un uh, interviewers. The third question concerns the acceptability of vaccine. 94% of uh, patients estimate that they could accept the vaccination while 12% uh, do not plan to have their uh, child vaccinated at all. The obstacles of vaccination, first of all, is the effect of the uh, uh, and the consequence of long-term vaccination, sterility, health problem, also the effect of the vaccine on growth and they are uh, and who and they are who consider that vaccination at an uh, early age represents an obstacle to vaccination the fifth the fifth question concerns the role of the school the fifth question concerns the role uh, that the school can play 89% of people consider that school could play an important role in raising children's awareness, and 61 want to be their children vaccinated in a public hospital, 80% in dispensary, and only 70% prefer to vaccinate their children in school. The Ministry of Health, with the partners, had developed a national plan for introduction of HPV vaccine uh, with an ambitious goal to reach a vaccination rate against HPV exceeding 19%. The introduction plan is based on fi five strategic areas. The first is supply and cold chain. The second is training and quality of service. The third is management and par partnership. The fourth pillar of strategic approach is monitoring and research, and the fifth area is communication and social mobilization. 
Another, uh, uh, an overview of the vaccination program and the prevention strategy, first of all, is concerned girls aged uh, on, uh, 12 years, and we uh, currently using a vaccination strategy in the primary healthcare establishment. There are several actions that we have been put in place, like training of uh, uh, training of health professional, production of communication and training support and guides and guide established in a joint circular with the Ministry of uh, Education and set up a specific system of monitoring vaccination. As we can see, there is the vaccination launch circular, the joint circular with the Ministry of, he of Health and the Ministry of National Education to allow health professionals to use school space to inform parents and especially students. There are communication materials that have been developed, practical guide uh, of health professional, communication materials such, such, uh, such of uh, frequently asked questions and post posters um, and brochures. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Benazouz, for this impressive uh, talk. And now we will move to, to our next speaker. It will be a panel discussion covering the topic of countries' experiences, lessons, challenges, and future prospects. This panel discussion will be moderated by Ms. Reem Ahmadi. Ms. Reem Ahmadi is a global public health professional with experience in communicable and uh, chronic disease prevention and control. Her expertise includes uh, policies, communications, advocacy, governments, and uh, uh, governance, sorry, and multi-sectoral partnership. She has worked with consultancy firms and UN institutions in Switzerland, Lebanon, and Dubai. In Lebanon, she worked on immunization projects developed an EPI legacy with WHO and planned and executed the national missile uh, campaign to respond to the 2018 outbreak with the Ministry of Public Health. As a licensed clinical uh, dietitian, Reem has public health expertise in health promotion. With a focus on the GCC region, she worked with the World Obesity Federation to develop formal guidelines for the management of obesity. Since joining GHS, she has been involved in facilitating events and campaigns related to public health. Ms. Reem, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Ms. Micheline, for, for the introduction. Uh, I would like uh, first to introduce uh, the panelists with us today, um, starting with uh, Dr. Busaino Ben Alelo. A uh, consultant uh, family physician and the head of non communicable diseases and mental health in the Ministry of Health uh, in UAE. With her extensive experience in non communicable diseases and mental health, Dr. Busaina is a leader in the field of healthcare in UAE. Her contributions to the field, including the launch of uh, WHO, ISH, CVD risk assessment tool in 2015, and her work on the development of national plans for diabetes and obesity, cardiovascular disease and cancer control for 2023-2026, have made a significant impact on the health and well-being of the people of UAE. Uh, we also have Dr. Hadi Abu Rashid. Uh, scientific advisor and head of the Cancer Awareness and Professional Development Department at, and, uh, at the Qatar Cancer Society. Dr. Hadi is a valuable as, uh, asset to the Qatar uh, Cancer Society, where he serves as the scientific advisor and head, uh, and head of the Cancer Awareness and Professional Development Department. His extensive experience in clinical research and his involvement in several organizations, such as the Gulf Federation for Cancer Control, the Union International for Cancer Control, World Cancer Day Advisory Group, the World Ovarian Cancer Coalition, and the All Can International, have made him a respected voice in the field of cancer management. We also have from Morocco, Dr. Lubna Abu, uh, Abu Selham, uh, 
Dr. Lubna is a highly accomplished public health expert with a master's degree in uh, public health. Her contributions to the management of several health programs and the development of the National Reproductive Health Strategy 2010-2019 as her uh, as well as her role uh, in the coordination of the national early detection of breast and cervical cancers program have made her an important figure in the healthcare system of morocco dr lubna has been the head of cancer prevention and control unit in the ncd department since 2019 uh, and our panelist dr emna al hashi uh, Dr. Emna is a consultant uh, gynecologist and uh, obstetrician at the National Center for Disease Control in Libya. She earned her fellowship as a consultant uh, gynecologist and obstetrician in 2008 while completing her interim at uh, Al Jalal Hospital, the only medical center specialized in obstetrics, gynecology, and maternity health care uh, serving the entire Tripoli in Libya. She is currently teaching staff at the Arabic and African Academy, and she is responsible for the reproductive health in the National Center for Disease Control uh, since 2020. She is an active member of, uh, at the Arab Board uh, of Health Specialization, Objective Structured uh, Clinical Examination in Obstetrics and Gynecology since 2008. In this panel discussion, we will delve into the experiences, lessons learned, challenges faced, and future prospects of managing, uh, of managing cervical cancer uh, in your countries. The panel, uh, the panel will consist of uh, bright experts who have been working on cervical cancer prevention and HPV vaccination efforts from a variety of national perspectives. And the discussion will cover the current state of cervical cancer, the challenges and successes in managing it, with a focus on availability, accessibility of HPV vaccines, etc., and future prospects for vaccine introduction and rollout in UAE, Qatar, Morocco, and Libya. Uh, welcome uh, to welcome uh, to all of you, our panelists today. Uh, I would like to start with uh, one question for all of you. Um, so uh, my question to you is. Uh, Given your expertise uh, and uh, your national perspective and having uh, worked extensively in this field, uh, can each uh, of you share an overview of the current cervical cancer situation uh, in your country? And uh, we, can, we could start with uh, Dr. Busseina first. Uh, Thank you for uh, inviting me for this uh, highly important uh, forum. And it's always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, if we look at UAE, UAE is uh, considered a uh, low-risk country of cervical cancer, where we have the age standardized incidence rate of 2.96 per 100,000. And cervical cancer is uh, ranking number seven as the most common cancer among females, and number six as the most common cause of death among females. Despite that, UAE was very proactive as considering uh, cervical cancer as a public health problem and adopting the WHA resolution on considering the cervical cancer elimination strategy to achieve 90-70-90 target by 2030. Thus, UAE developed a national screening program in 2014 according to the standardized international guidelines. Uh, also, it's uh, launched the National Cervical Cancer, uh, cancer Registry since 2014, and it has been updated on a yearly basis and it plays a very vital role in providing and monitoring the quality of data on cancer. And also, as you know, UAE is the first country in the East Mediterranean region to launch the HPV vaccine through their national immunization program among the school girl children. And we have will share with you our future plan also on HPV vaccine in the, the next week, inshallah. Thank you, Dr. Busseina, for sharing uh, for sharing this uh, overview. Uh, I think this is in a nutshell. Uh, we all uh, we all are proud of uh, UAE's uh, progress and uh, and the, the efforts that they are uh, exerting for cervical cancer elimination. Uh, we can move to Dr. Hadi. Dr. Hadi, uh, please, uh, the floor is yours. 
Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of <clears throat> this very important event. Actually, I've been listening to the talk since yesterday, and the discussion is very important. And I think we really need to have all this uh, momentum and, uh, uh, let's say, putting uh, the head of multiple great experts and great experience together to push the agenda in our region for the HPV vaccination and and the, uh, let's say the elimination of HPV, reducing burden of cervical cancer in the region. Regarding the burden of cervical cancer in the state of Qatar, and not only cervical cancer, you know, HPV, as we are all aware, it ha it's, it's a player role in, in a variety of cancers, uh, colorectal cancers, head and neck cancers, and so on. Uh, but in particular, regarding cervical cancer, the, the topic for our forum, so instead of Qatar, the age standardized rate per 100, uh, 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 it's 7.2 per 100,000 population. Uh, 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 that's kind of put it in a, a figure of numbers that will be comparable to other countries. Mortality-wise, it's 0.2 per 100,000, uh, uh, the age standardized uh, mortality rate. If we're looking at the uh, the females, top uh, top five, uh, uh, or let's say top ten uh, regarding incidents in state of Qatar, uh, uh, cancers affecting uh, women in state of Qatar, and that's including uh, uh, citizen and resident in state of Qatar. Cervical cancer is ranked f uh, the fifth. Um, regarding data uh, and having the let's say the information regarding the burden of cervical cancer, the registry exists. In a robust, in a population-based cancer registry, in a robust way, since 2011. Before that, it was more hospital-based registry. Uh, still, there is no uh, HPV uh, per se registry. Uh, I, I would say tracking significantly of the data of the HPV, uh, uh, and that's kind of uh, re uh, regarding the screening aspects. We uh, in Serb Qatar we're providing opportunistic cervical cancer screening done in the in the primary care centers uh, uh, using liquid biopsy and with HPV testing, combined with the HPV testing. And for the vaccination is actually uh, this, I think the next month will be, will start the HPV vaccination in, in the clinic based, not school based. It will be gender uh, neutral in the clinic. Back to you, Ms. Rim. Thank you, Dr. Hadi, uh, for sharing uh, this overview. Uh, and uh, we can uh, discuss uh, further uh, the future plans in our next questions. Uh, now moving to uh, Dr. Lubna. Dr. Lubna, if you may please uh, answer the same question. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, in Morocco, uh, cervical cancer is uh, the third uh, cancer in women. We have standardized, uh, standardized incidence about 9.2 cases per uh, 100,000 uh, women. And uh, the elimination of uh, this cancer as a public health issue, like uh, the recommendation of the, the, the global strategy was uh, held and uh, constitutes uh, one of the priority of our Senate National Cancer Plan. And we adopted all the, the the objectives of this uh, WHO uh, called the 1970 90 uh, percent uh, but we do have a lot of uh, challenges uh, the main uh, the main uh, challenges uh, is the awareness like we discussed uh, was discussed in the first uh, session uh, really to raise the awareness of uh, women about the the importance of uh, vaccination, uh, early detection, screening, and the treatment of uh, of uh, precancerous lesion is a real uh, challenge uh, challenge in uh, in our country. In uh, and we we are we we are currently about uh, the implementation of uh, early detection program and screen uh, cervical cancer screening uh, program uh, based on HPV uh, testing. We already we we performed the, the screening with the VIA uh, technique, but uh, currently we are uh, working to implement the HPV testing uh, screening program. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lubna. Uh, we can now uh, move to Dr. Emna, who's also with us on this panel. 
Hi, Dr. Emna. Hello, good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I am Dr. Amna Haji. I am consultant gynae and obstetrics, and I am responsible for reproductive health program in NCDC Libya. I will start to talk about the cervical cancer in Libya. Cervical cancer is a very low incidence in Libya because we are entered the HPV vaccine from. 2014, and we are given to the uh, girl at the age of uh, 12 to 14. And uh, we have awareness in Libya in every year, but uh, from the NGO, uh, not from uh, uh, government, uh, but we have uh, uh, pap smear and early diagnosis program like um, this program it's um, sometimes it's present sometimes no because we we have a very big challenge in our country from the war and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, we don't have a uh, uh, good good management about the cervical screening program in our country. And we need support from the WHO about this point. But uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, we, we have just uh, uh, 241 uh, patients with cervical cancer in every year. Uh, so it's not highly incident and the prevalence is very low in our country. Uh, but we we want to do a uh, cervical cancer elimination program in Libya, and we will start this program uh, from the NCDC in this years uh, to put it uh, free for, for charge for every woman. She can do it pap smear, uh, but in nowadays uh, there is no free in libya uh, we have bab smear but in the private clinic uh, not in the hospital and not in the primary health care uh, that's why but uh, alhamdulillah we have very low incidence of uh, cervical cancer in libya thank you thank you dr amno uh, now we can move to uh, to the next uh, question uh, what have been the main challenges uh, and successes or key lessons learned in managing cervical cancer in your country so i will start also with uh, dr busaina and we can follow the same uh, flow uh, in UAE, the most uh, important challenges were the vaccine hesitancy. As, I mean, in the beginning of the HPV vaccination, there were great hesitancy, and it was mainly lack, uh, due to the lack of awareness among the healthcare providers, among the parents, the teachers, the students, the teenagers, and even the community. So UAE, to have this successful story, started by digging and determining the causes of this methods and this disbeliefs and started by encouraging and uh, raising the awareness among the healthcare provider through multiple scientific workshops, uh, multiple training programs on counseling skills, how to give the messages to their parents regarding HPV vaccine safety and the role of HPV vaccine in the life of teenagers to prevent cervical cancer. And also we have involved the media. We have started by intensive media campaign to spread the unified message among the whole country that HPV is a safe vaccine and also we reframe the message that it started by STD prevention but there were a lot of hesitancy and then we have changed it to cervical cancer prevention and also we have encouraged the woman to be more proactive to, uh, to reach for uh, cervical cancer screening and to have early detection and early management. And we are looking that uh, there are a uh, lot of key lessons from this successful story, that the collaboration and the good partnership with the multiple stakeholders and to have one vision and one mission that will enable all the countries to have a successful story like UAE. And back to your Thank you, uh, Dr. Busseino. Uh, we can now ask uh, Dr. Hadi the same question. 
thank you, Reem. Uh, I think we are uh, in, the, in the region. Uh, I, we have the same issue. I would uh, same like UAE, Qatar, and uh, and I totally agree with the point that uh, Dr. Boussaida mentioned. Is the, at the beginning uh, is the hesitancy. I mean, it still exists the hesitancy toward the toward the vaccine among uh, the the public and the healthcare professional that due to lack of knowledge and, and not having full understanding and the, also the mis, uh, mis, uh, misinformation that uh, around the HPV vaccination. And there has been an effort increasing, and the public actually been studies uh, even done also the, here in Qatar that the parents, when they receive the proper information, their level of acceptance uh, for the HPV vaccine is go as high as 80%. So, uh, and it's documented in an actually in an intervention based uh, awareness study done here in Qatar. And so we really do need to invest more uh, awareness for, for the public and uh, for the healthcare professional. And for the public, we need to have uh, this multi setting approach, uh, mean, uh, and, and multi method, uh, mean, uh, multi setting is in at work, at the education place, school based at the university uh, university base and also at work uh, uh, workplaces uh, especially in the gcc uh, that's a, a great exposure through 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 these location we we don't usually tend to have this uh, you know the community approaches uh, the community big event is usually it's easier to access through school work uh, and university uh, to target it and also using social media nowadays i think the pandemic uh, created this uh, uh, investment in the pan, uh, pandemic. So anyway, I'm not going to go into the more future plan, but the biggest challenge, uh, awareness, uh, the knowledge, the per, uh, perception, and uh, the also the communication methods of the healthcare professional when they recommend the vaccination. That's also a tricky part. Thank you, Dr. Hadi, for your answer. Uh, now we can ask uh, Dr. Lubno. Yes, for me, for uh, Morocco, the, maybe the key success is the, the political commitment. Uh, I think uh, to have a leader to, to, to follow and to, to enhance the, the commitment of all the stakeholders is very important. Uh, good coordination with all, uh, all uh, stakeholders is also very, very important thing to to, to implement and to succeed in this implementation. The second point is the, the, the budget securization. Uh, like we do in Morocco, we, we begin with the only project and uh, progressively we can secure the budget for the, the vaccination as uh, my colleague say, said, uh, Ministry, of, uh, Ministry of Health is uh, the first and the only stakeholders for the, the vaccination uh, financing. Uh, also, the healthcare facility availability is very important to, for the, the case management. And the, the, for the challenge, and uh, as my colleagues say, the communication and the awareness for me is very important. And uh, I appreciate uh, in the first session, the, the story said by, by our colleague for the, the, the perception of the HPV infection and the preconceived lesion. And if you allow me, I, uh, I would like to tell you also the story with my sister, which was also diagnosed with the preconceived lesion with HPV infection. She is uh, high educated, she is veterinarian. And the first worry for her is not the, the precancerous lesion, but uh, the issue was how she was, was infected. So, so uh, uh, she, <laughs> she was, uh, she was uh, all the time asking how I was infected, and she, she lost uh, so, so much time uh, on this. So I think the best, the first, and the the first issue we we would uh, we, we have to work on is this demystification of the, of this HPV infection. Uh, it's an uh, infection uh, 
we can get the virus uh, about uh, many many ways and we we have to focus on the infection the prevention and the early detection thank you thank you dr lubna and thank you for sharing this uh, story as well uh, now uh, we can move to dr amno Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we have a very high incidence of uh, HPV infection in our country in this year. If we are comparing between the uh, population before the seniors and nowadays, we have very high incidence of HPV. If we are uh, looking at the media, and we are with uh, uh, many uh, lectures uh, about the vaccine, and uh, uh, we are pushed the, the the vaccine. We have big problems in our country. We have the vaccine, but the the food to give the for health care. That's why this is big problem in our country. So uh, in the next month, we will start uh, of awareness month about the HPV infection, and uh, we are uh, a good view about the HPV vaccine in our country. So to reduce, hello, hello. Yes, Doctor. Yes, yes. Please uh, proceed with your answer. You are. It's not a good connection with the internet. That's why. Hello. Hello. Uh, do you want to to try to reconnect and uh, you can uh, you can answer the question once you're ready. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, to shed lights on the on the common answers that you all had. Uh, so basically, the challenges that include low acceptance rate, uh, lack of awareness, um, and then uh, also vaccine hesitancy uh, amongst parents, uh, and uh, the importance of coordination uh, among stakeholders, and also uh, empowering uh, media and uh, leveraging uh, social media platforms to is uh, more awareness. Uh, I would like to ask uh, a question and uh, feel free to answer. Uh, so based on uh, our presentations yesterday uh, on the 1970-90 strategy uh, and the regional uh, strategy that was developed by WHO EMRU, uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on its relevance uh, uh, to the regional context and uh, do you think that it will address these common challenges that uh, you just mentioned uh, right now? Feel free to answer. So this question is uh, for any one of you. Okay, can I answer? Uh, I think the global strategy of survival cancer elimination is highly related to the region and even to each country and it should address the challenges. Already some challenges already included and it has been revised by all the countries in the region. All the challenges has been addressed, but I think each country will start to implement it. They will learn from other countries' challenges and what are the obstacles that has been there and what are the solutions they have done to overcome these challenges. So I think we have to share our experience. Everybody should learn from the others. And if we collaborate together, I think the strategy is easily can be implemented with all the collaboration from different sectors and with other countries in the region. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Busseina. And uh, honestly, I had a question for you specifically, given that uh, UAE has been working on uh, various fronts for cancer and rollout uh, of the HPV vaccines. So now that you've mentioned that the importance of sharing uh, valuable uh, key lessons and knowledge, 
Uh, do you think uh, there is any valuable key lesson that you learned uh, from UAE's journey that you can uh, share with the panelists today? Yeah, sure. Uh, in UAE, the most valuable key lesson is the high political commitment. We have in UAE, we have a very high political commitment, which was behind the successful story of our HPV program. And also, uh, health sectors cannot work alone. Uh, any health sector cannot work alone on cervical screening and on HPV. It's the collaboration and the partnership with multi-stakeholder supported by the political commitment, which has included in its national agenda, and it was supported and uh, being evaluated and monitored by the Prime Minister Office on the outcome and the situation, uh, the ministerial degree on HPV vaccine, and even recently we'd like to announce that maybe Within uh, one month, we'll announce the vaccination HPV for the males, for the male school uh, children, and also for different categories of thrombic community with after having medical uh, consultation. So I think uh, the high political commitment, the partnership and collaboration, and having unified vision and mission among the country will sustain our UAE successful story in HPV. And I think one day we'll reach that uh, cervical cancer won't be considered a public health problem. We reached the 100% vaccination, inshallah. The screening won't be highly important. And uh, as we all know that no woman should die from cervical cancer or to suffer from the complication of cervical cancer. So all should work and to have one mission to tackle cervical cancer from the world. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank, thanks a lot, Dr. Busseina, for this insightful answer. And uh, we we are all working towards a common goal, and hopefully, one day we can uh, achieve it. Uh, let's uh, let's see if Dr. Emna is uh, back with us. Dr. Emna, can you hear us? Yes, I am hearing you. Okay, I will repeat the question that uh, we wanted to ask you earlier. Uh, so, what do you think have been the main challenges and successes or key lessons learned in managing uh, cervical uh, cancer in your country, in Libya? Uh, the biggest challenge for uh, this uh, uh, cervical cancer elimination program in Libya, we don't have uh, BAB smear free in uh, in the population so we have just bab smear in the private and in the private it's uh, highly expensive for no the normal population uh, this is the first point second point we have hbv vaccine but uh, many family is refused to take her kids to take this vaccine and we are praying this vaccine with the uh, very expensive in, uh, uh, for our country in this situation, but we uh, reach many doses, it's expired uh, and it's not taken with the, the girl. Uh, the big problem for us, we are give this vaccine just for the girl and we are not give to the boy. And uh, the HPV infection is spring to the family from the boy, not from the girl. This is the problem. We are trying to put it, the vaccine for the boy and the girl at 12 years, not just for the girl. This is the first point. We have, uh, uh, we need some support from the government about the uh, cervical cancer program to put it uh, every uh, year for the family free, we need it. But uh, many people, we uh, they don't know how, what's the bab smear and uh, uh, what's the cervical cancer because we have a very low incidence of cervical cancer. But the problem in our population, uh, HPV uh, infection, it's increased nowadays. We have a study in uh, NCDC. It starts from uh, February about uh, the HPV genotype in Libya to know what's the type of HPV in Libya. And uh, we are uh, trying to uh, uh, just to press on the government to start uh, the free uh, cervical cancer elimination program in Libya. 
because uh, uh, all our uh, in the government they said there is no uh, no HPV uh, infection in Libya. There is no uh, cervical cancer. We have very low incidence, but we don't have data about this problem. We have registration, but this registration is very poor. I am trying to collect data from the uh, registration uh, center about the cervical cancer. Uh, we we have just for uh, 2020, and they are writing for me, just we have uh, 40 cases of cervical cancer in Libya, and it's very low uh, if compared the, the another patient we are presenting in the hospital in the TMC or uh, in the in the another center. So uh, we will try to do it a very good uh, database in Libya about uh, the the number of uh, cervical cancer in Libya, and uh, we need supporting of uh, the all the cures to uh, take this HBV uh, vaccine. We have uh, uh, 240,000 doses it's reach in our country on the March. So I will start for this one awareness about the HBV vaccine and will give uh, very good view about the HPV vaccine and the important to take and give it to all girls in the, uh, in, the in the age of 12. So I will uh, take the target of uh, this awareness to the family more than the girls to push all the family to take her girls to take this vaccine. And inshallah, we hope uh, to reach the best in our country. We have many challenge here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Amla. Uh, we are all uh, we all agree with you uh, about uh, these challenges that need to be urgently addressed. Uh, now I will move to the to the other question that uh, I had for all of the panelists about uh, the future prospects of cervical cancer management and uh, how do you think we can ensure that the cervical cancer elimination efforts uh, are sustainable and can be ma maintained over the long term. So uh, let us uh, start with uh, Dr. Busaina first and then we move uh, to Dr. Hadi. No, thank you, Reem. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that UAE support the global strategy to eliminate the cervical cancer 1970-90. Uh, today, uh, for the last year, we have reached a vaccination of 82% with two doses among the school girls, despite the pandemic before that, despite the challenges. So I think we can reach the targets. Uh, as I mentioned, that we hope that uh, cervical cancer won't be considered anymore as a public health problem. And if we strengthen our screening program and we make it as a national, not just opportunistic, and we have the record system for every female when she reached the uh, standard, the required age or the target age group to do the cervical screening, she has to be recalled for to come and do the screening. And uh, also we have the co-testing, uh, HPV and the pap smear, so it, we have a good result. Also we have, alhamdulillah, advanced qualified hospitals uh, treating according to the standardized international guidelines. So I think we'll reach the target soon, inshallah. We can reach the vaccination and even the screening and even the management if we detect it early. So no woman should suffer from cervical cancer. Back to you. Thank you, Dr. Busaino. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Hadi can share with us uh, his answer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stress on the point that you mentioned, which is I really it's one of the things that I always kind of it's one of my area of interest is sustainability and efficiency. So when you want to do something, we need to think of it before we, as we are planning, we need to plan in a way to be sustainable and efficient. Uh, so this is this is one of the the things is uh, we need to uh, and that's where where the research come in and that's where where the we need to really to do more and more burden studies and cost effectiveness. And it's clear, you know, worldwide, no need to do more further. I mean, at the worldwide, there is a lot of uh, uh, protocols and initiative, but one of the things is to, when you want to invest in, 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 in any public health initiative, to first get all the support that you need to have to make it sustainable. 
and to continue in a way that you know, having all the vaccination and, uh, and actually gender neutrals and school-based age, having this uh, data system to monitor and evaluate your initiative, keeping tracking all the data, also having moving from opportunistic to national-based uh, cervical cancer screening, and all of that is need to, people to sit on the same table, and and and, and as Dr. Alibda mentioned, need uh, need uh, and and also Dr. Abusaina, you need uh, pol 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 political will and and all people sitting on the, on the same table, and we have this uh, in Qatar. We've been uh, in part of the National Cancer Program, and the governance board. There's a lot of agreement and the Ministry of Public Health, also people sitting and pushing the agenda forward. So uh, ha having uh, that sustainable uh, initiative, uh, coordination, uh, people all agreeing on the same agenda, unified message, and uh, basing all of our decisions on, on uh, to be data-driven and keeping the concept of e e efficiency uh, in every step we, uh, and the well-being of women. When I say efficiency is not you know, measuring, uh, the, the whole concept of efficiency in cancer control, with the main to be uh, uh, people-centered. So it's not it's not just uh, we're talking monetary or money. This is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, when we are averting a daily uh, or disability adjusted uh, year of life for women uh, and being when they are back in the community, we are not talking about one person. We are talking about the whole family, uh, and that's that's where we need to think forward. To, to plan and to think efficiently in a sustainable way. Back to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hadi. Uh, now, Dr. Uh, Lubno. Thank you. Uh, I am uh, totally agree with you, Dr. Hadi. It's, uh, it's a really the big uh, issue and the main challenge. Uh, to answer the, the first question uh, is the about the barrier. I think uh, we all as uh, Arab, uh, Muslim, and uh, all the this region we have uh, we have the the same cultural barrier, and we have we have to to work hard to to fight and to to enhance the, the awareness of the population. Uh, we have also uh, uh, to to enhance and to improve the integration of reproductive health uh, services uh, uh, in Morocco uh, to to implement the, the 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 cervical cancer screening based on HPV vaccine. We know that it will be uh, costing much more than the VIA. As you you know, the VIA one one liter uh, of uh, acid acetic is cost uh, about uh, nine or ten uh, dollars, and we can screen more than one thousand uh, women. And to to implement the, the HPV testing, we, we it will cost more than uh, thirty or uh, thirty five dollars per woman. So it it will cost uh, too much for our country and in our uh, uh, mid-income uh, city. So we 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 have to think about the integration of reproductive health uh, and to to create the linkages about other uh, other uh, programs and services like uh, HIV, uh, who have already the gene expert machine and to. To work together, and uh, as you say, Dr. Hadi, to to be efficient uh, in this implementation. To answer the last uh, question, uh, we can't. Uh, uh, as you know, the the HPV vaccination will uh, give the result in maybe 20, 20 years. But now we, we do have a lot of women with the HPV infection, with precancerous lesion, and also with uh, invasive cancer. And uh, for this, we have also to enhance the quality of services uh, in management, in case management, and in uh, the affordability of, uh, of care services. Over to you. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Lubland. I appreciate uh, all of your efforts and uh, we, I really hope we can keep the momentum uh, to achieve uh, elimination even if it was after 20 years. Uh, let's uh, move to uh, Dr. Amno. Uh, Dr. Amno, we, uh, we are asking about uh, about the future prospects and uh, how do you envision uh, the future of cervical uh, management, of cervical cancer management? I'm not sure if uh, Dr. Emna can hear us. Um, so uh, meanwhile, we can uh, move to, uh, I had uh, one question uh, for you, Dr. Hadi. So uh, I want you to uh, speak to the role of, uh, of Qatar Cancer Society and how it contributed to uh, raising cervical cancer awareness and management uh, in Qatar. Thank you so much, Shreem, for this question. And, and I'm, I'm going to answer this uh, question in a, a two layers. The, uh, the broad that all, uh, so what actually patient organization or cancer societies or NGO could play a role, and also what QCS uh, has been doing. Uh, I will go back and forth uh, to uh, in those two kind of uh, layers for the answer for the question. So w what we have been doing as Qatar Cancer Society, we've been, uh, uh, first of all, we've been working with the policymakers. We've been sitting on the table with the, in the National Cancer Program. We've been pushing the, uh, pushing the agenda and momentum, the discussion, maintaining the discussion about the importance of uh, the elimination of cervical cancer and basing all of our discussion based on the, the WHO and the regional initiative. And, and that was, uh, that's mainly the backbone for all of our uh, discussion. And uh, in addition to the advocacy level, uh, advocacy level also we've been working uh, at, at, let's say, two or three different layers. With the community, we've been working on the community uh, awareness about uh, the cervical cancers, uh, the national campaign, uh, the risk reduction for that also of uh, HPV vaccination. And we've been working at the, at the school levels. We have we've been having a, a agreement with the Minister of Education uh, and we've been, we've been providing awareness to the school students. The, the focus a lot, uh, mainly on, on the discussion initially was was the cervical cancer and vaccination with with the female, and not also all of the student also being targeted the whole ecosystem in the schools, mean the teachers, and 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 the administrative and and when you are looking at the school as an ecosystem, it really uh, 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 build up the momentum of the awareness in that uh, the system, uh, and 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 collaborating back and forth. So this is system university also the university. And and especially that majority of the students, um, I mean, I mean, there's a, a, a lot of people go to the Qatar University, so we've been doing agreement with the Qatar University, an awareness uh, session that is pushed and driven by the student themselves, and we've been building on the health students, and even we established clubs uh, in the medical and health students that they carry forward this uh, initiative, and in, and in cervical cancer awareness. Uh, moving on to the uh, public, uh, and we've been reaching the public in two different methodology. One is the uh, corporate at workplace. So all of our partners from the variety of part, uh, corporates uh, uh, that have been supporting the cause of Qatar Cancer Society, we've been uh, conducting sessions uh, and collaborating with them, even building the, the capacity of the nurses or the health and uh, occupational health advise, advisors in every entity. To, to carry on that message, uh, to amplify the message of uh, cervical cancer awareness, the HPV uh, vaccination. And in, in that uh, perspective, also we've been working, uh, uh, you know, I mean, with the, with the that's, that's kind of summarize uh, the public and, and on top of that, the media people, the media teams, uh, it's very essential, not TV, radios, uh, social media uh, and, uh, and not only kind of, you know, one or two talks, we've been producing um, uh, radio radio and TV ads that go on for, uh, for period of the year and produce those videos with the experts and people uh, went through the, you know, uh, and we uh, we had the pleasure to work with Ms. Fathiyah, Dr. Fathiyah, who was, you know, 
in a couple of campaigns, uh, awareness campaign, and using the voices of people that they went through the experience and they understand the importance of the vaccination. So this is, uh, the, the let's say, the arm of the community, the arm of the people li uh, lived, lived with the disease or uh, or they were able to catch it early and in the pre-cancer stage and benefit from the, or they benefit from the vaccine, vaccination. We've been amplifying their voices significantly and there is nothing more powerful than the power of the story. So that that's what we've been. Uh, I mean, uh, so their meaningful uh, participation, the, the journey we've been, uh, we emphasize on it in a variety of media, and, and we've been kind of looking which which best tool to be more cost effective. We've been very uh, vigilant about the sustainability of that. And the last perspective, which is very important, and we've been collaborating with the private health corporation, private sector, and so on is working with healthcare professional on building up the knowledge about the cervical cancer and HPV. And we are now in this, the next step of having the strategy of improving the communication skills regarding the HPV vaccination with the healthcare professional. I think this is the area in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Health. And regarding collaboration, just yeah, last night we had a big public event that has panel discussion for the public and people living with cancer that in uh, uh, with cervical cancer in particular and ovarian cancer uh, we had MOP HPSCC H, uh, and National Center for Can uh, Women uh, Hamad Medical Corporation uh, all of them sitting on the same table and also women lived with the uh, Ms. Fathi was uh, Dr. Fathi was with us in the panel discussion yesterday in the event and there was I wish that you guys were here you've seen a lot of uh, how actually, when we explain everything clearly to the woman, they just push forward and they want all of them. They want, I mean, last night, seriously, they, if we had the vaccine outside the door, we could have gave vaccine to all of them. They could have took it all of them. They were that. So this is this is kind of uh, what uh, and uh, what we work and also uh, the same. Uh, we work at the level of regional and uh, international initiative. Uh, and you know, one of the uh, we are proud to be one part of the team that work with FOCP and the regional cervical forum. Uh, we've been uh, this, is, uh, and we've been working with the you know monitoring and evaluation data, reporting data. So that's uh, a global health strat strategy we've been working with you guys. So it's a pleasure, uh, uh, and through the Gold Federation also. So th that's kind of uh, I know it's a long answer, but it's uh, it's uh, kind of those are the layers that we focus on. Yeah, actually, this is uh, very comprehensive, and uh, I think uh, definitely to address uh, to address this uh, issue, we have to be as inclusive as possible and uh, follow comprehensive approaches. Uh, so I really appreciate uh, your answer, Dr. Hadi. Uh, now we can. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, another question to Dr. Lubno. So Dr. Lubna, as uh, the head of the Early Detection uh, Service for Breast and Cervical Cancer in Morocco, uh, I am aware that the country has implemented uh, a national early detection program uh, for cervical cancers uh, that focus not only on raising awareness for prevention, but also on early detection. Uh, so what steps uh, do you believe can be taken to further address uh, the high hesitancy rate in Morocco? Uh, as you said, uh, Morocco uh, implements the uh, uh, has uh, implemented the cervical cancer uh, program uh, and uh, institutionalized it in 2012, and uh, for uh, women uh, age uh, 30 to 49, and uh, also uh, who, who was performed in. Uh, in all uh, primary health care uh, services, it was uh, free, free of charge. And uh, despite all the, the efforts, uh, the most high uh, participation rate we do have is uh, 10% in 2019 before the COVID-19 pandemic. And in 2020, 21, and also 22, we are about uh, four or five percent of uh, participation rates, uh, despite all the efforts, in 2022, in September, we we, we launched and we organized a, a big uh, uh, campaign uh, 
uh, uh, during one month. Uh, and uh, despite all the efforts, we we do have a lot of uh, hesitancy. Uh, in our last uh, DHS, which is the demographic and health uh, survey, uh, we have uh, more than 94% of women who knows about the cervical cancer, the HPV infection, and uh, the benefits of the screening. But despite all this knowledge and this, uh, this we we have a lot of hesitancy. That's why we are currently we wish that the the switch to HPV testing would be more benefits for our participation rate and we we will can uh, have uh, more women we are we are also testing the the self sampling as maybe uh, an uh, uh, an element to to enhance this participation and also the to 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 revise our communication uh, strategy to to have uh, uh, maybe uh, more uh, uh, cible en français to have uh, to 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 target uh, the the key population maybe to to enhance this part participation rates. Over to you, Ray. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lubna, and uh, we hope that the participation rate will increase uh, with time. And, and definitely, we have to take into account uh, uh, building trust uh, between the public and uh, the communicators. So, as Dr. Hadi mentioned before, uh, leveraging uh, platforms uh, of influencers and influential uh, players can also maybe enhance uh, this. Uh, this uh, participation uh, rate and make them more confident about uh, about taking the vaccine. Uh, now, before we unwrap, uh, if we wrap the session, I want to give uh, the floor to each one of you to give uh, maybe uh, a few words to uh, to wrap up this very insightful discussion. And hopefully, we can uh, continue uh, this discussion even after uh, this forum. Over to you, Dr. Busseino. Okay, thank you, Rain. Uh, my message will be to the woman that uh, please don't hesitate, screen yourself, go for screening, and please protect your uh, children by giving them uh, the HPV vaccine as early as possible. Thank you. Dr. Hadia? Uh, I think this is uh, the uh, I will, uh, you know uh, there is no message after Dr. Buthena message. Uh, the, I always doctor, I admire Dr. Buthena. She always put it uh, the end result. She put all our insight and inspiration in one word. I admire that uh, this gift in in Dr. Buthena. Uh, my my last is actually I would say we uh, from my perspective we need to improve the communication skills regarding HPV. A vaccination among health care professionals. I think, uh, 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 and not only that, also about the integration, I'm going to uh, borrow a concept Dr. Arubna mentioned, we need real integration of uh, cervical cancer screening into reproductive health clinics. It's not just, you know, if they ask for it, to give it to them. We need to keep hammer in every time we discuss with them in every visit for a product of health, women uh, wellness clinic, have you got your uh, pap smear? Why are you not getting it? This is some things like, you know, do you smoke? You know, that's, you know, those are kind of now are standard questions, that kind of thing. And back to you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Lubna, the floor is yours. Thank you. Don't, uh... Uh, my uh, two colleagues uh, said the, the main uh, key, key messages uh, that I want to share. Maybe uh, to, to add, we, we don't have uh, the right to, to, to let uh, too much uh, missed occasion to, to target and to speak with the women about the, the issue with the, we, with the importance of the screening, the prevention and the case management. 
uh, we still have a lot to do and uh, maybe as you say together we will uh, succeed and achieve our goals thank you thank you all for these uh, powerful key messages uh, and uh, takeaways uh, from this discussion and uh, i want to thank you once again for your continued uh, commitment to ending uh, cervical uh, cancer as a public health problem Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all. Thank you so much. Thank you for this great panel. Thank you. Uh, thank you all panelists for those insightful discussion covering strategies to tackle cervical cancer in the whole region. And now. Okay, uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Hala Youssef from UNFPA, Dr. Nassim Pourghazian from WHO, and Mr. Majid Mohammed from Friends of Cancer Patients, who will give us reflections of the third Sharjah Cervical Cancer Forum and the way forward. Welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Micheline. I suppose we're waiting for Dr. Hala and Mr. Magic to join us also. So, good morning, everyone. So, uh, uh, am I to start? Please, Dr. Hala. I am to start? Yes. 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 Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Very good. So, uh, Yanni, hello everyone. It's uh, it's very nice to to enjoy the two days on discussions for cervical cancer elimination. Um, I, I was joining, or I was joining online, of course, and listening to all the discussions and the presentations and how are uh, they really uh, tailored to make. Uh, an effective change on cervical cancer elimination. So I thank everyone for their contribution and the technical uh, 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 oversight for this kind of work. And we're here to discuss our way forward. And from UNFPA side, we want to build on the progress that has been since the first edition of the 2019 Sharjah Declaration. And as part of uh, the Sharjah Cervical Cancer Forum commitment to the global strategy for elimination of cervical cancer and also the regional strategy developed by WHO with uh, different partners, we are committed as UNFPA Arab states to advocate for the development and implementation of those strategies and continue on the monitoring efforts uh, using our uh, developed monitoring and evaluation framework to track uh, different countries' progress on cervical cancer elimination. Um, and I think this will be achievable through uh, establishing collaboration with partners because alone nobody can do everything. So collaboration and partnership is key here. And we'll be depending on better use of evidence-based decision making uh, the sharing of countries experiences and the lessons learned as well as the best the best practices to move our targets and achievements forward uh, i think cooperative capacity building efforts are also needed to expand uh, uh, the cervical cancer uh, control activities and we, our acting in solidarity and coordination between governments, national and international organizations will definitely help uh, in that regard. So we can maintain together the momentum on cervical cancer elimination activities as we respond to uh, the Sharjah Declaration commitments, number three commitments. And um, I will highlight the points that were discussed in the webinar and that really resonate on what we're saying. So the role of NGOs was, was really highlighted in the discussions and uh, such as the work of Mazaya from Sudan and suggestions to coordinate the efforts of civil society with the government are really important. 
we need to invest more in advocacy and embrace the opportunity of having a preventable cancer uh, arena. So everybody should speak this language. Also, uh, we cannot measure what we cannot, or, or we cannot really know what's happening if we're not measuring and if we don't have data. So investing in data collection, validation, and dissemination is very important uh, specifically for areas that are not a priority. Um, so vaccine and screening needs to be a priority in, in different settings. Uh, we also need to strengthen partnerships and engage key stakeholders, as I mentioned earlier. The M and E framework and tracking is important. Um, the development and implementation of a communication strategy that embraces the role of social media is important uh, in that region, in our region specifically. And uh, it should include how to address vaccine hesitancy and how to increase women acceptability of the screening process. Uh, a strong uh, HPV vaccine introduction communication plan is needed in that regard for social mobilization and attaining the best coverage. We need to invest also in innovation and emerging technologies, um, specifically, specifically that is acceptable to people, and we need to build on what the successes uh, uh, in the UAE after the huge efforts they have done and having probably an implementation of HPV compulsory vaccination for girls is a uh, suggestion. Enhancing the social media and screening services is also another suggestion. We need to consider women's health from the broader perspective, uh, specifically when discussing cervical cancer programs. Well, these are only highlights of the discussions and what we hope that we can achieve uh, during the coming uh, period. So thank you so much for all the efforts, preparations and discussions and looking forward to better elimination of cancers, of cervical cancer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Hala Michelin. Would you like me to proceed? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Dr. Hala. I think you, you put the base very well uh, for me also. Uh, hello, everyone. Greetings. My name is Nassim Pourgazian, and I'm technical officer working in the Director of Program Management at WHO Regional Office, where I support the coordination of technical programs. And I think that's very relevant to, to this agenda, but also this forum. I would like to start by thanking the FOCP and all the organizers for bringing together so many people from different entities but who all have an interest in supporting this agenda and um, i've been working with ncds uh, for for many years now and of course multi-sectoriality is always important in public health is very important for ncds but i think with the cervical cancer agenda it's really pushed to its edge uh, considering the richness of the agenda and the three streams of work that we want to implement in countries. So that's why I really appreciate this forum and uh, these, these three forums that have been held until now and this opportunity to bring together different entities. Uh, on behalf of my colleagues, Dr. Lamia could not be here today, but I would like to emphasize on exactly this, the importance of joint collaboration and uh, something that we, at least in our office also, and, and across the three levels of WHO have really aimed to achieve is the um, collaborations across technical areas of work. Um, and this is something that we also hope to see reflected at the country levels. Uh, since the start of the development of the regional strategy, we have continuously strived towards having all our colleagues that that are engaged in either HPV vaccination, reproductive health, uh, NCDs, health system, or any other part that is relevant for the cervical cancer agenda to be uh, engaged and to also use the resources and networks associated with them. And I think uh, uh, that's really key when it comes to the cervical uh, cancer elimination strategy and agenda as a whole. 
Um, from our side at WHO, uh, now we have this regional strategy, which of course is, is just a start and a blueprint. Uh, what is important is to take that uh, to countries and to make sure that it's adapted to the country settings. We know that we have a very diverse set of countries with different challenges, but to really make sure that we get that rich engagement from the whole of the government and the whole of the society in that respective setting to solve the problems that might be uh, faced uh, in each country. Uh, I would also like to, to stress uh, maybe on the importance of the, the three streams uh, of Work. We've talked about the different aspects related to HPV vaccination, uh, screening and, and treatment and palliative care. And I know from our engagement with countries that sometimes there is this, uh, there is this fear of not being able to tackle all. And of course, we need to look where there needs to be a phased approach, but also remember that each of these interventions target different subpopulation. And that's why they are so important in complementing each other. Um, last but not least, we've already talked about the communication and awareness and how important that is, um, the use of survivors to inspire people and to really uh, lift taboos and stigma on this subject. I just want to maybe finish on a positive note and say during just the five last years since the, since the uh, initiating this flagship initiative at WHO, I feel that we are already communicating and speaking about this matter much more. We can we can read about it much more. People are speaking more openly about it. And I think when it comes to the communication, we're doing a great job and we just need to continue that to have appropriate messaging, but also clear, honest and, and, uh, uh, and target specific uh, messaging that allows us to, to push this agenda forward. I won't dwell into some of the details. Of course, we have a lot of opportunities across the three streams of work. We have seven Gavi eligible countries in our region and six additional middle income countries that can qualify for support for HPV vaccination. This is a great opportunity for our countries uh, to take advantage of. And I think it's important also that as participants in this forum from different countries and different entities, um, we exchange our uh, experiences and the successes that we have managed to achieve. I think for us, it's important also to bring together countries that have similar contexts and that can learn from each other. We see that in Morocco, they're moving towards HPV testing, which will be a great experience to share with many other of our countries. And hopefully also we can get the support we need from unit aid and other such entities to push the pricing uh, to make sure that we not only have cost saving in terms of HPV testing and shorty, shorter intervals of screening, but also have more affordable tests in itself. I'll stop there. Once again, thanks for the organizers, and uh, I look forward to WHO's further collaboration with all of you uh, as we push this agenda forward for all the women and girls in our region. Over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Nassim, and uh, Mrs. Maj Mr. Majid, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nassim, Dr. Hala, for your contribution. Uh, my name is Majid Mohammed. I am the advocacy and scientific executive at the Friends of Cancer Patient Organization. Um, of course, it has been a very enlightening two days of discussions and uh, informative dialogues. Um, we have uh, uh, representatives from government, uh, uh, representatives, academia, regional and international cancer organizations, and civil societies representatives uh, uh, in today's forum. And um, in the UAE, cervical cancer actually is the sixth leading uh, female cancer in the UAE. And thanks to our uh, leadership and UAE strategy, uh, we have become the regional leader when it comes to the implementation of HPV vaccine. And we have included within our uh, national immunization program. And um, uh, following Dr. Bothena's input today uh, in the discussion, uh, the vaccine has indeed contributed in the decreasing the incidence and the mortality rate in the, uh, in, the in our country. And um, uh, today, uh, building on the success of the first cervical cancer uh, charge declaration 3x3 in 2018-19 and the second 
charge declaration from 2021. We are today uh, pleased and honored actually to announce the, uh, the launch of the charge declaration 3.0 in partnership with our colleagues from UNFPA uh, Arab States Office. So one of the main recommendations from the second Circuit Cancer Forum in 2021 is to endorse the establishment of a robust monitoring framework for the progress of the HPV vaccine implementation and cervical cancer elimination. And through the monitoring framework report that has been developed by Dr. Nasreen Kamal for the UNFPA Astro Office, um, the report result can affirm that today we do need to invest in better data collection and analysis and utilization as well to support the evidence-based decision-making, as well as to address the current uh, inequalities of HPV vaccine implementation. Um, we need to keep investing uh, in advocacy and communication plan to get the message across uh, to different multi-sectorial uh, partners and uh, in the, our member states and to become our key uh, advocates to address the caps and the, uh, to allocate proper resource mobilization to maintain the implementation of the vaccine and to ensure sustainability. Uh, at the end, we want to reach a high level of uh, coverage uh, for this vaccine and to save lives of young girls. Uh, now, coming uh, to the end of the Char third Sharjah Regional Circuit Cancer Forum, I can only thank all the esteemed experts and uh, uh, speakers who have contributed in sharing their perspectives and shared experiences and actions needed to minimize the impact of cervical cancer in our regions. Through this forum, we were able to discuss ways to support the Sharjah's agenda of uh, providing uh, innovative solutions and strategies uh, and collaborative and practical elimination plans to be implemented in future uh, years to come. And I really looking forward as FOCP to meeting you all on the first and the fourth uh, Sharjah Cervical Cancer uh, Forum, inshallah, to be physically in the upcoming years uh, and to invite uh, our regional and international partners to hopefully celebrate our progress when it comes to the establishment of more successful cervical cancer uh, focused programs and to align our efforts with the WHO Cervical Cancer Elimination Strategy with multidisciplinary collaborations, uh, inshallah. Thank you all again, and it's my pleasure to be with you today in the session. Over to you, Mishidin. Uh, thank you all panelists and uh, now coming to the end uh, of the third uh, Sharjah Regional Cervical Cancer Forum, uh, we would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Uh, Mrs. Aisha Al Mullah, Director of Friends of Cancer Patients, to uh, give us uh, her closing uh, remarks. Uh, Mrs. Aisha uh, is a leader who possesses a strong commitment to creating a positive impact within her community. Her academic achievements demonstrate her attitude for finance and her drive for self-improvement. Mrs. Aisha began her career as senior finance coordinator at Salam Salam Yasazir, uh, where she effectively managed projects for Palestine and Syrian refugees and oversaw the department's yearly and monthly budget and expenses. In September 2015, she assumed the position of head of programs at the Big Heart Foundation, where she coordinated with existing uh, and potential po uh, uh, partners and implemented projects for all the initiatives under the foundation. In July 2022, Mrs. Aisha was promoted to the role of Deputy Director of Friends of Cancer Patients before becoming director in October 2022. Mrs. Aisha will address her, uh, uh, we will address her uh, recorded video. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, I am honored to speak to you all at the closing of the third Cervical Cancer Forum 2023. I want to thank all members of local, regional and international health authorities, Ministry of Health and Prevention, our co-organizers, UNFPA, WHO, your efforts and contributions to this important event have taken us all forward in our goals to eliminate cervical cancer within our communities and the whole world as well. 
Over the past few days, we have heard about the devastating impact of cervical cancer on women and girls in the MENA region and the urgent need for action to prevent and treat this disease. We have also discussed the role of the HPV vaccine in preventing cervical cancer and the importance of building a comprehensive HPV vaccine implementation strategy plan and communication strategy to improve advocacy, social mobilization, and awareness in the region. It is clear that we must accelerate our efforts to stop the death of women and girls from this preventable disease. This requires not only political and financial support, but also a concreted effort to engage with communities and raise awareness about the importance of prevention, screening, and treatment as well. As we come to the close of the third cervical cancer form, I am proud of the release of the monitoring framework on cervical cancer report, which has been piloted on six countries across the MENA region and that has contributed through the data gathering and the monitoring results to access the progress of HPV vaccine implementation and cervical cancer elimination. However, we must not become complacent. There is still much more work to be done, and we must continue to advocate for the resources and support necessary to ensure that every woman and girl has access to the prevention needed and treatments they need. This includes not only the HPV vaccine, but also access to screening and treatment services, as well as education and awareness campaigns to empower individuals to take control of their own health. We must also recognize that the fight against cervical cancer is not just a medical issue, but a social and economic one as well. We must work to address the underlying factors that contribute to the impact of cervical cancer on certain populations, including poverty, lack of access to healthcare, and culture and the social barriers. In order to achieve the goal of total elimination of cervical cancer in the MENA region, we must work together across even sectors and disciplines and engage with communities at all levels. It is only through collaboration and determination that we will be able to overcome this devastating disease and ensure a brighter, healthier future for all. In conclusion, let me say that the third cervical cancer form has been a resounding success and I am confident that we will continue to make progress in the fight against cervical cancer. So thank you all for your participation and commitment to this course. Thank you all panelists of uh, all those insightful strategies to tackle cervical cancer and save countless lives across the region. Coming to the end of uh, the third uh, Sharjah Regional Cervical Cancer uh, Forum, uh, I would like to thank all uh, the, the participants who participated in this uh, forum, uh, as well as our supportive partners um, Ministry of Health and Prevention, Emirates Oncology Society, HRA Day, Kuwait Cancer Control C uh, uh, Center, uh, Mazaya Charity Organization, Qatar Cancer Society, uh, Rufaida Women's Health Organization, and we would like to thank uh, our official sponsor, MSD. Thank you very much and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the fourth uh, regional cervical cancer forum. Thank you very much.